uh, making some making some changes in the uh, driver sponsorship world. But uh, going to HB since since you haven't been on the show before, we kind of need to start from the beginning a little bit. Get your kind of rundown. Everybody's likes to know how you got started and how you got into RC. There was so, more. There was wait, wait, wait. There was a bigger switch. He went from PlayStation to PC. Oh, uh, that one. That one definitely that, went under the news. That, that one yeah, went. It got global. swept under the rug. Yeah, right. Think, oh, but wow. No. Um. So I started um RCing twenty fourteen. Uh, okay. I got a slash. Pretty sure it's pretty much everyone's first car of this generation. You're probably right. And then um. I figured out you could race them, and then I got an SC10.2. I think that was like a – there was the factory team kit, so you had to put it together. <laughs> and then that thing probably had so many buggers, but at the time I had no idea. But uh, <laughs> then you re- I realized you could race them, and, yeah, kind of went from there. You know, I had a local track called Hot Shots. Uh, Paul and – I don't know, Jason, did you ever go there, or was it only Paul and JR? I think only Paul and JR went. Yeah, so Paul and JR and Damon, I remember I met them at a race in 2015. So I've been kind of squid now and kind of having fun for a year or whatever. And then I went to the race and or this bigger race, and that's when I met them. And then, uh, let's see, so that's the end of 2015. And then 2016 was the Super Cup, so I went down to Beach Line. And then, dude, it just snowballed from there. So, just... <laughs> um, go go back to this track you started at, uh, Hot Shots, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I remember you're, the race you're talking about, where the guys went up um, from here, and uh, you got a little bit of an experience there that weekend. Were you mm-hmm. just racing short course, or did you have a two wheel then? No. So okay, yeah. So I did kind of skip a little. So I had at this race, I raced a B forty four point two. So I, those are your had, two classes: short course and four wheel. Yeah, short course and four wheel. Okay. <laughs> okay. And um, yeah, it was fun. And then I, yeah, so might do the whole. I mean, it uh, the whole huge issue with my forty four two the whole weekend, just kind of the whole time I had it because I was such a booger eater. I couldn't set the slipper right, so I'd be stripping, like, the ring and pinion, Mm -hmm. and the gearboxes were plastic, so Mm -hmm. I kept stripping pinions, or idler gear, or uh, not idler gears, uh, pinion and ring gears, and I remember I bumped from, like, the C to the B on, like, half a rear end, half, like, a rear (laughs) ring, and then Damon, like, grabbed my car right off the track and, like, fixed it. <clears throat> like it was like it was like marshall race marshall race for the from the c to the b it was pretty it was pretty cool like that was definitely a memory that stuck with my he goes i was like looking for my car after the race and uh i see it in damon's pits all torn down like didn't even say anything and he's all fixing it you're just like i'm factory yeah <laughs> it was pretty <laughs> cool that was definitely one of the i would say one of my top five moments that kind of sticks with me. So was, you got it fixed. You got back out there in the B main of four wheel. Yeah. Um, did you break again or did you? Did no. You... I, ironically, I think I was racing against uh, Tyler. No, that was in the C main. It was, uh, I want to say Brian Lewis. Okay. Me and him were racing in the B main and I got like seventh or sixth. I didn't do well, but it was. It was pretty cool at the time for me, like bumping out of the sea and having fun, meeting those guys. And so I finished six or whatever in the B main. And then I watched the A group, so the pros. And um, yeah, that was kind of when I started meeting. That's when I kind of met those group of guys. And I hung out with JR a bunch. And um, yeah, it just like, they were like, oh, yeah, you got to come down to Beachline in january for the super cup and that was when it was still dirt so that was pretty cool i got to go to beach line a bunch before it went to uh turf and you know now it's carpet so so that was kind of like just having that event 
kind of in your local area and kind of meeting everybody and having that good experience kind of almost kind of locked you in, kind of really got you hooked on everything. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, I'd say so. It was pretty cool to like see. Oh, at the time you're like, oh, these guys are like, you know, James Stewart, Villapoto to you in the RC kind of community. So it was pretty cool. So uh, then getting into when you went down the beach line and all that, did you, were you still running the short course or did you run a two wheel or what, what, when did you get a two wheel? So I, I got a two wheel after that race. Okay. It was a B five M it was the champions edition. Okay. So it was the one with little buddy and pudge on it. Okay. And then um, I, so I had that and then I had a, I got a B forty four three. So I got those two kits for Christmas. So I did the whole metric conversion. That was a disaster on the forty four three. Okay. Like just being kind of so new to the industry and whatnot, it was like my dad's like, Oh yeah, you gotta use a tap three mil tap and tap these screws like in the aluminum and stuff. So it was it was cool. But yeah, so I ran two wheel mod and four wheel mod and um I wanna say I was in the B's. I might have been in the four I might have been in the four wheel main. But I don't exactly remember. I think I was in the B's. But there was also, and there was a period of time where you were probably running 17.5 buggy, right? No. So I ran 17.5 when I signed with Trinity. So okay. like it was, I did that whole year of um, just hitting like, you know, Wicked Weekend. Uh, I borrowed an eight scale from James Calhoun at mm -hmm. the time. And I ran Wicked Weekend in the Sportsman class. I think I, 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 I was in the main. I don't know. I think I TQ'd, but I think I got second. I think Julian actually beat me. Okay. Um, but so, you know, I ran a bunch of races in Georgia and Florida, kind of followed the Super Cup a bunch. And then um, 2017 was uh, when I signed with you, with J Concepts and Trinity. And then okay. that's when I ran 17.5 because we went to the Maryland Nationals with Paul and uh, JR and the band. Or in the F350 or 250 or whatever it was. Okay. So you went up there and that was at Mimi's, right? Yeah. So what was that experience like, you know, kind of traveling with those guys? Uh, now you've been racing about, what, a little over a year or two when you yes. travel with them? Yeah, that was like, that was awesome. Like, I remember we drove to Savannah to meet Paul and JR and Damon at the, you know, at an exit because it was kind of, I was out of the way. So I rode up with them. Um, yeah, it was, dude, it was so awesome. I have so many like pictures in my phone from that weekend. <laughs> and it, I have all those memories in my phone. So yeah, it was. I, I think I did. I think I made the mains that year. So I think that was, it was all just kind of a awesome weekend. Like I know I podium four wheel and I think I was mid pack and two wheel, but it was a pretty awesome weekend. So you're talking about, you went to the roar nationals, you raced 17, five and 13, five four wheel. And then yeah. you, po you podiumed in four wheel. Yeah. I think I, I think it was a three way tie. Like we all want to main me Drayton Staub and uh, Will Brent. They're not Will Brenton. Um, oh, what's his name? Um, I know who you're talking about. It's a Will, right? Will Cushing. It's a Will, Will Cushing. Yeah. 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 I think I said Brenton because I saw him pop up on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. But, uh, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, Will Will Brenton's checking in here, and he's saying that he was there that year. I thought I, I think he was in tech. I don't remember. I don't remember if he raced or not, but I know he was definitely in tech. I remember that keeping everyone in line yeah i remember that was such an awesome track that was so um he kind of mm -hmm. moved on from there he got a little um you ran for trinity j concepts mm -hmm. you did some some more uh, <clears throat> stock racing when did you start getting into mod more seriously and then uh kind of getting on the associated team i would say the so after the nationals that I probably started, I mean, I think I was running modified, like just locally. Uh, okay. Cause at the time we still had that hot shots track uh, mm -hmm. still open. 
So I was running mod, and then that was when the B. I don't know. Anyways, I was running modified, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I think I started running all the modified races the next year, which. I don't know. I kind of think I probably should have ran stock a little longer, but I was just too. I think I was just so into it that I was like, oh, I just want to run modified and run with the fast guys. Yeah, you wanted to run yeah. with the big boys. Yeah. So, yeah. So I ran eight, uh, ran modified, and then twenty at the end of seventeen, um, I signed. That was when I signed with Team Associated because I remember talking to Brent, and Brent gave me his card and his phone number. And all that stuff, and I got. In, that's when I got in touch with Brandon Melton, who is the regional manager, okay, for here. And then that was when I started. That's kind of when I started running eight skill a lot. And then, um, yeah, that was so twenty. So we're in twenty eighteen, mm -hmm. uh, still doing super cups. And then that I would say twenty eighteen is the year I started traveling, like not everywhere, but I would say it started picking up more, like. I was going to, I think I hit some INS races and, um, you know, all the nationals. I didn't, I don't think I did the ENS, but I did, you know, the field nationals and the um, 10 scale Nats and just kind of a lot of the East Coast bigger races. So explain to me, you know, you, you mentioned kind of borrowing an eight scale and kind of getting out for one of the. Uh, race time entertainment events but when did you get your own eight scale and when did you kind of get that thing built up and kind of running for the first time with all your own equipment so um after that weekend so kind of backtrack a little bit that was 2016 when i did that okay um james i borrowed my buddy james calhoun's mbx7 eco i think is what it's called and uh, that was awesome. Like, I had such a blast, and I remember just, it was awesome. I had, like, the perfect eight skill weekend, like, no issues, or, you know, my, like, I think I had, like, I used two sets of J Concepts, like, reflexes and cream the whole weekend. Like, that was just it, which is, you know, nuts to think about now with how many tires we use, just trying stuff and whatnot. But two sets got it done that weekend, and then I got a, mbx7 r eco then you know following that so the my first two my first eight scale was a mugen like i bought my dad got me a uh an mbx7 r eco and then we got a nitro car so that was pretty fun i would say honestly like my whole nitro when i started nitro it was honestly i didn't have any issues like i it was kind of like <clears throat> To me, I thought it was pretty easy, like, the maintenance part. I mean, there were some boogers I had for sure, but, like, I'd never I – I don't think I ever, like, failed a main. Like, I don't – like, other than maybe breaking an arm or something. Like, yeah. I never had any mecha mechanical issues, like, with the Stuff clock. that you really thought could have been your fault. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure me breaking my arm was my fault, but – Yeah, that's, but that's a little different, yeah. I guess. Yeah, like I didn't have any engine issue, like nitro per se issues with the clutch, or linkage, stuff falling apart. But um, yeah, it, it was all pretty much a blast. Like I had fun the whole time, you know, wrenching on everything. And yeah, it was fun. The only thing I hated about the Mugen was, God, this those clutch uh, shoes. You had to use the, it was the old school, so you had to use a tool. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of a pain. So, um, you got through the, na you know, you, you mentioned you did a nationals. Was that the one up there at, um, um, state line? Yeah. So I took those, that nitro buggy to state line and, um, I think I was in the eights. So I, I know I did the, si I, I qualified into the 16s mm -hmm. and then, um, that was kind of still when JR was kind of still traveling a bunch. Okay. So he was kind of my pit guy. And along with my dad and um so we did the i finished up in the eights i think i was racing i can't remember i think i was racing against landon lewis okay so yeah i i thought that was i had pretty fun i remember i was in a heat with uh bornhorse like i think he squitted out 
and just was in a lower heat and I remember seeing his name in my heat and I was just like oh my gosh kind of like you know I, I'm going I must be going pretty decent so a little you know little do I know now it's like like when you kind of squid out and seating it's like oh my gosh I'm with these you know blue flaggers <laughs> or as Gotti would say clowns yeah clowns. <laughs> these hazards but but yeah, no, I mean are... that's that's obviously a part of racing, and yeah, um, and for the most part, I mean, I mean going to the Roar Nationals, I remember that race too. I mean, there is a ton of good drivers out there, um, you know, and it's not like, and it's hard to analyze it all because in in every sport in everything you look at whoever is the best, you know, like you're always watching the top three or you're watching, but there's a lot of other good drivers out there besides the people at the very top that are the best. I mean, it's just because they're not winning doesn't mean they're, they're not good at it. I mean, you go to some of these nationals, I know the 10 scale buggy nationals, there's 30 or 40 guys that are really, really good drivers yeah. and that stack the, the C to D main, uh, traditionally so um you know when you do these events there's not really any slouches out there um but like you said sometimes you can see a little ahead of maybe where you belong and then sometimes you can see a little lower than you belong maybe that's where you and joe kind of hooked up yeah. over that weekend yeah i think yeah. he definitely seated a little lower <laughs> i was probably more on the higher end <laughs> so um how did the overall you know you got in that seating run but how did you think that the you did in the event overall and i mean you mentioned you had kind of like a really good weekend but um um i think i so i finished up in the eights and okay i think that was definitely a pretty hard track i would say that was a really hard track like at the especially like for the, my first nationals but then but it was it was pretty hard and then I remember the one qualifier we had at night. I think it was round two where you on it you couldn't see anything, dude. <laughs> it was literally like it was nighttime, the lights were on, the smoke was not going above the lights, so it was all mm -hmm. stuck down in the lights. And dude, I remember everyone's pace, like I Spencer TQ that round. I do remember that. Okay. And his pace was like a lap less than round one pace, just I solely it had to have been solely based on the fact you couldn't see yeah so i i thought i did pretty good it was definitely like mm -hmm. a good first kind of roar race to get your feet wet mm -hmm. so i mean i went back the next year so i mean, obviously i had fun and it's definitely something i wanted to do and i mean that was the track layout with the wicked step downs right the staircase yeah. where yeah, you yeah. had to jump the jump and then you landed basically on those on the staircase yeah I really wish I could go back to that track because I know now I I do I feel like I would be like pretty fast on that track. Just I remember how terrible I was going getting around there, and like I I watched like just re go back and watch the videos and I'm just like God, to jumping under that step, jumping into that dragon's back looks so cool. But yeah, I sucked. I couldn't barely do it. I know what that, I yeah. watched. I watched that track. I'm like, man, that would have been my downfall, man. That those kind of things that are like kind of risk reward. Yeah. Like I tend to go way more conservative and especially if I was trying to be competitive and that doesn't really work in eight scale. You just gotta, you gotta, you gotta just go for it, man. Yeah. I remember Cole was, I'm sure Mayfield and all those guys were too, but I remember watching Cole and dude, he was jumping so far down the stairs Mm -hmm. it was insane yeah i mean it's just uh that the great confidence that you know the guys would have doing that was was definitely impressive yeah so um kind of moving on past that nats you're now you're um still running 10 scale you're doing eight scale but uh you're kind of getting into maybe getting on the associated program and getting a little more tight with those guys mm -hmm. yeah so um 2018 was like my first full associated year um i went to pretty much all the races sic and all those with the a8 scale cars and 
It was pretty awesome. Like I wouldn't, I, I kind of kept my trend of not really having any mechanical issues. I had some. I think I had a clutch issue in a Pan B. It's crazy. I remember all this now that you kind of think about it. But yeah, um, I I did have a clutch issue in Nitro Buggy, and um, I know I made. I didn't make the P and B main, so I was in the B main, but I made the SIC and Wicked Weekend mains, and then I don't think I went to, or I went to AMS, but I think I was in the B for Nitro Buggy, and then I made the main in Truck and E-Buggy. Or no, I didn't run E-Buggy. I didn't run E-Buggy. I ran the two Nitro classes, made the main in Truck, and was B main in the Buggy. And, you know, doing this you at this point had you bumped up to the pro class this was in the pro class now yeah yeah i think my first pro class race was 2017 at wicked okay so so, so let's talk let's kind of rewind for a second uh you started at this hot shots track you had a slash you had a b44 you got into two wheel you did some stock driving mm-hmm. um and by did you say was it 2017 you were running in the pro class yeah at the end of it yeah so the end of 2017 you bumped up into the pro class and you really wanted to run mod right yeah so you're you're running some mod and running some pro class in the eight skill class so that's i mean that's a pretty big um advancement from just kind of starting like you're saying and running the slash but you know, there you are, like, what, three and a half years later? Yeah, um, something like that. And, you know, I, I know that from my experience and watching a lot of other people that, um, and as Paul likes to say, it's if you have some early success, it really helps in kind of attracting you to do this or anybody long term. Mm-hmm. And obviously you were having a little bit of success. Yeah, I... um I kind of look back on the photos now and I'm like, man, that kid was pretty fast. Like, I just kind of know, like, you're watching, like, now, like, you know, you have the uh, Fee Long kid and, you know, Burnett kid's getting pretty fast. And you're just kind of like, when they kind of run the pro class, it's, you know, they're fast, but, like, you know, there's definitely, like, some maturity stuff that um, comes with it, which I'm sure I was just as bad and, when I first started, so I could, like, I kind of sometimes get frustrated. Like, when you're either, you know, passing them or battling with them, I've, I've, um, it's, you kind of, I kind of sometimes would get frustrated, like, you know, if they're not being super, you know, like racing smart. But yeah. then I kind of look back to when I was in their shoes, and I'm sure I was the same way or even worse. Mm-hmm. So there's definitely some maturity that um, came pretty brutally fast when I started running pro class. And and then along the line here is kind of being on the uh, on the associated team, and you kind of got to hook up uh, with some pretty good friends in in the business. Not only you know the guys that you kind of started racing with, obviously the the Pauls, the Damons, JRs, mm-hmm. your buddies with all these guys, but then you kind of um, you know you're able to get kind of uh, Spencer on your side and uh, spending a little time with him, and then. Uh, you know, you spend a lot of time working with him mm-hmm. in the hobby room, as he calls it, and uh, helping getting up, you know, a little bit further up to speed. Obviously, Spencer went through a learning process with with everybody and having a lot of mentors in the business. And then uh, you kind of, I'm not going to say latching on, but you kind of were able to um, become buddies with Spencer and hang out with him a little bit. So talk to us about that. <clears throat> process a little of of hooking up with somebody and just kind of trying to drag some knowledge out of them so actually i paid ronnie you know a cup i you know it was about 50 bucks a month no no <laughs> <laughs> no so i we went to the it was before the field nationals in 18 so there was a warm-up yeah and that was when ryan and uh mayfield and um uh, spencer came down and uh yeah i just kind of like it was like oh you know just hey how are you doing introduce myself and ryan was kind of like you know who's this kid you know get him out, out of my here. sight kind and um 
but Spencer was like, you know, super helpful and uh, obviously it helped add an associate car. So I'm, I think at that time Mayfield had the Mugen car. And so he was just like, oh, you know, this kid's squid. Like my <laughs> brakes were all like jack. So that was like, I built the brakes by the kit and, you know, when being a, you know, just kind of more in tune with the vehicle, uh, you find a little <clears throat> like better kind of setups or whatnot to run for the car. And so that was kind of where Spencer kind of helped me a bunch. And I remember we walked the track a bunch together. Um, and then May, the, like, I kind of hung out with Mayfield a little bit more throughout the weekend because I ran for Reds. So, yep. okay. Um, I had an issue with an engine. And he gave me a uh, WRX engine. So at the time, that was like the newest engine they had. And um, I remember he's, my dad was like, you know, I, I was like on the verge of tearing up because I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like gave me a complete engine, like pipe and everything. And uh, my dad's like, oh, you know, we'll give you some money. And he was like, man, just buy me a pack of, a 12 pack of cores and call it a day. <laughs> That'll do so. It. But no, that was that's kind of how me and them kind of got <clears throat> introduced, and um, yeah, it's I remember for the I think the 10 scale Nats, I stayed with Tommy Hines, so I somehow I, I don't even remember how I think through Spencer and it, it, dude, it's just nuts, like it's just. I met those guys and you know, got in contact, and it was just like the whole that was when I met Alex K. It was just, it's not, it's just crazy how all that happens so fast. I think one of the things that Paul said back then was he was amazed because he was like, he's just like, Jackson has no shame. He'll just go up to any of these guys and say, <laughs> Hey, I, I need some information. Hey, I need some help. Um, can I stay with you? Like, I mean, it was like, you know, what, whatever it would, That's whatever what it would do. Whatever needed to happen, he said that, you know, essentially you would ask. Yeah. And he's like, and if somebody told you no, you'd be like, okay, they told me no, you know. But if yeah. they said yes, it's like, yes, <laughs> you know, like, I, I got it, you know. Yeah. And, but there's a lot to be said for that because a lot of people, including I, when I would have probably been your age, I would have never asked, you know, I was like so. Really? Yeah, I was like wow. so intimidated to talk to different people but i thought it was it was pretty <clears throat> awesome that you're able to do that you're able to get in there and talk to these guys and and um and get what you're looking for you know you're like i need some info i need to get yeah. better i need to you know like you're 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 being aggressive with trying to become uh, better at this and um that's what it takes I, what's crazy is i didn't even feel like i was bugging the guys i was just like you know i I don't know if I maybe thought about it at the time, but now I'm kind of like, well, you know, it's kind of their job. It's kind of yeah, part of part of it. So I was just like, oh, these guys are here to help, you know, me and be here for themselves. And mm -hmm. so I was just, to me, it was like, they didn't like, they didn't like show me a cold shoulder. So I was like, all right, cool. So I'm sure everyone's like that. And that's kind of how I'm sure that went. Mm -hmm. Like I remember at the 2018 that I was going over to, Ty uh testman i was like hey man i need you know an o-ring or something <laughs> like i had no idea who the guy was i was just like hey you know ryan told me to come ask for you for parts and I meanwhile just... ryan's probably saying watch this i'm gonna go tell him to get it from ty yeah <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there yeah, he goes <laughs> oh he's going over there he's going over there <laughs> yeah, yeah. Watch, it, watch this watch it yeah they're but like you said it, the guys you know we all there all are there to to help and uh, some people don't, they don't say anything. And, and it, it's interesting because, you know, I I've met and talked to pretty much everybody out there and, you know, there's, you know, 99% of everybody in RC is really a, a good guy. You mm -hmm. know, um, there's that 1% you wish you would have never met, but in general, 99% of everybody is really good and they'll, they'll help you out, especially if you're, approaching them at the right time or not in the heat of a moment for them or they're racing you usually get a good experience and i think you're definitely an example of somebody that's gotten a good experience asking people what to do and uh it's kind of paid off yeah i think uh definitely pretty blessed and pretty lucky to kind of have the experience i had 
So uh, kind of moving along a little bit. We're getting through some more races, and you're still, you know, obviously doing 10 scale. You're doing 8 scale. Um, walk us through what kind of what the next couple of years was kind of like. So 2019 was like my first full-blown travel year. I went to like i went to so many i went to so many races i gained immunity from like diseases like i <laughs> i got i got sick a bunch um i think that was just because i've never traveled a whole lot so i'm just getting exposed to you know little you know bits of the flu and COVID wasn't a thing but i'm sure it was or whatever but yeah. it was you know it, i was getting sick so many times and it was nuts i know like we started out the year i went to crc and that's the sick capital of the racing yeah. community yeah. dude i got i didn't get sick there but dude i came up like that monday flying home your throat's just on fire mm-hmm. and that um, motorama man it's another yeah one. motorama you get sick um, right after motorama dude it's almost like all the i mean the h races is i don't really get knock on wood but i don't really get that sick that often from the h races but dude it seemed like the 10 scale races the ones you get sick from because I mean, you got all the tire oh. sauce, and it's. I think it's indoors, and the track's always, you know, somewhat damp. Mm-hmm. So you're breathing in kind of wet dirt, and yeah. uh, which you know, it's you know, we're, we're men, dude, it's whatever. But you know, it's just I think part That's of a it. Good point. But um, yeah, dude, 2019 was like, oh, I think I went to Nitro Challenge that year, Silver State. Like, dude, I hit everything. That was that was an expensive year. Like I remember that just being a super <laughs> expensive year that I was fortunate enough to have, and that kind of was. Oh, go ahead. I remember too in that particular year was you were contemplating going to the worlds in Slovakia. That yeah. was kind of up for discussion. You were considering going, and I think you had qualified, right? No, so I didn't qualify. Okay, I um, so that would have been the twenty eighteen that qualified. Yeah. I sucked it. That was hobby action. That was when the aquas were like the tire, and that was that whole ordeal. And um, but no, so I didn't qualify, and I resume in with my you know dog water resume. He still let me in. They're like, all right, this guy's credit card clear, so we'll have. <laughs> but so basically, I was gonna go, and then um, I don't know what happened, but dude, I'm so mad I didn't go. Because that was like, I mean, you know, we are still waiting for Alex K's race report from that year. So it would have been nice to know how he did. Yeah. Um, We're still following along. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm still holding my breath on that one. There has been no closure. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. As far as I know, it, he was ready for main day. And it's, that was the last we saw of him. There's been no closure on that one. <laughs> but no, um, I would have, that would have been an awesome I think event to go to, especially with if you could kind of go from that year and look forward and see how bad everything's gotten with traveling. I think that would have been like the best experience to have, but I didn't go. I think I know um, it was, I was at hobby action, ironically running with Spencer and I was like, he was like, Oh dude, you got to go. And so I resume and I got an email back and I was going to do it. And then I think it just ended up being a lot of money. And at the time it just wasn't like, oh, you know, we'll just do this race instead. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what happened. Well, I mean, when you do a world's uh, something like that out of country, I mean, you could probably do three other events for the price of that one. Easily. Like I, I know I had my passport already, but. I think more of the flights. I'm sure the flights were grand and, you know, all oh, that stuff. So, I mean, yeah, it was probably going to be expensive. I'm pretty sure you buy your own tires, like a spec yep. tire. So, yep. it's just an expensive kind of event. Um, so, I, I didn't do it. I watched. I, I know I, st- I stayed up. I think it was kind of a couple hours ahead or whatever. But, you know, I stayed up and watched it all and texted Spencer, you know, when he won. So, I mean, I was I was there. I was there. I was there spiritually, like <laughs> watching. You know, and I, I'm pretty sure I remember when you either called or texted Spencer, um, because yeah, like you said, you were up the whole time. And I know when after he won, it was like you know he was getting a lot of calls and texts mm-hmm. and everything. And I kind of remember you checking in 
on them. And um, yeah, it was a, um, it was a real high point. You know, I, that 2019 was a real, um, was a good year. You know, I, I remember Jay Concepts, we had a good year, especially in the racing side. Spencer mm-hmm. had a great year uh, racing, uh, won the Nats, the Worlds. Actually, both Nats. He won yeah, the he won uh, 10 the scale, Nats. 10 scale Nationals. He won the eight scale Nationals. He mm-hmm. won the Worlds. Um, all in 2019, you're not going to have a much better <laughs> um, year than that. Yeah. And um, but he, you know, he got it done, and that was cool because I know, I know you were checking in and and uh, checking with him. But yeah, it was a good experience. Uh, I know when maybe me and you had talked or me, you and Spencer had talked and we were talking about you going and I was kind of like, you know, up in the air, whether I kind of thought you should go or not. Really? But, um, and it, of course it's easy to say after the fact, right? Yeah. It's easy to say after the fact, Oh yeah, you should have gone Every You know, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's like, Hey, if you go to your favorite, um, sporting event and your team wins the uh the biggest game you know you can say hey i wish i would have been there i mean that's easy to say after the fact but yeah um you know going in and and having to spend the money and then you're it's not just about watching your buddies race you want to race too and you want to be competitive and i think that's there's two sides to it it's like do do i want to go and watch or do i want to go and actually race and compete and i probably it maybe just a little touch early to go maybe to compete yeah but at the same time you wouldn't have got last <laughs> no <laughs> yeah i, I it, like you said it, it's pretty easy to like look back at everything oh you know i should have went but at the time dude i remember at the time i was like i was at hobby action with you know mayfield and all those guys and they're like oh thank you like oh you know you're thinking about going and i'm like dude i'm gonna suck so like I I remember I that definitely was like I'd say about thirty percent of my answer like I was like yeah. uh, you know I don't want to be miserable for you know two weeks other than like getting on the, I, mean, I wouldn't say miserable just you know you always want to do good yeah so you know I I think be that out. was yeah 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 I'd be kind of bummed so but no it was that was definitely if I could I don't have any regrets but if I had the opportunity to go back, I would go back and go do that race. So we got by all that. Um, you know, I think you were, you know, climbing the ladder there in 2019. Like you said, you did just about every race you could do, um, which I mean, honestly, when you look down the list of these guys out there on the national scene and in this era of racing, I think there's been a couple eras since my era, but how many races there are to run and to compete at. Um, Mm. I remember thinking, um, you know, you brought up Landon Lewis earlier, you were racing with him at the nationals. I remember thinking like, man, this kid has a ton of experience. I mean, he kind of did like you did for a couple of years, went to everything. Mm. I don't think there was a race he didn't go to except for the worlds. I mean, he's experienced them all, you know? Yeah. Uh, between Silver State, Nitro Challenge, Cactus. I mean, he did he did the old school Cactus Classic. I mean, these guys um, hit them all. And yeah. there's just a lot of things to learn doing those that that tour. Mm-hmm. And I guess that was, you know, I see now I see like um, Al Horn's kids uh, who you're close with, Aiden and Austin. I mean, they got a ton of experience yeah. um, racing indoor off-road events and it's not like just the years they've been racing because i mean they've probably been doing it since they've been i don't know maybe five or six um and but just being running 10 scale off-road indoors i mean they've been to every race there is yeah um multiple times and they also had a lot of good races in their local area i mean we're talking about um a a lifetime's worth of experience for people in eight or nine years Mm. so um that's what i see today you know the the opportunity for people um 
and you know kind of their if it's maybe their parents or sponsors getting behind them to make uh, a lot of these events happen because i mean you know now as well as i do that you make these big events where you're just overcome with very good drivers good information you watch a lot you start to take all this in right it's like mm. And it's not even happening like you're not like, oh, let me write this down. Like, oh, you know, I need to do this and I need to do that. It's just happening like fast. And it's like you're one second you're watching somebody that's really good on the track. The next second you're back in the pits getting, you know, something tuned up the way you want it. And then somebody says to you, oh, you're doing that wrong. And then you change and all of a sudden you just learn that. And it's like you're gaining so much um, knowledge and information and track time doing this stuff. And when you can accelerate it in a year like that, um, it's like, it's like a growth spurt, right? It's like, you just go through this huge growth spurt and all of a sudden it, a year goes by and you, but you've experienced almost a lifetime's worth of racing in one year and you've kind of like you retain it all right. Because like now, when when it's something you like the retention of those facts and all that information is just like perfect right like you could be reading a book in school and you're like i don't i'm not paying attention to any of this i don't know what's going on like i did that i'm not you know i have zero (laughs) i have zero recollection of anything that's happening here but you're at the track and you're racing and you hear like four pits over da 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 you got to do this to your tires you're like boom like that's yeah. to you and you're like you're locked in and you've you remember that all year long so it's funny how that uh happens but that was like your 2019 yeah i thought i think one of the funniest kind of moments is like when you're doing 10 scale and stuff and you're kind of like walking through the pits and i dude i remember i like you know when you don't really want to go ask somebody a question but you're like you know it's going to be on their pit table so, like, I remember I would go, like, whoever was going fast, I'd kind of, like, look at their table, like, okay, mm-hmm. yellow, sticky kit, or wh- whatever it's called, liquid wrench. <laughs> yeah. It's like, all right, he's running a liquid wrench. And then I'm like, okay, but he could have that on his table. Then he could be running something else. <laughs> so then you kind of, like, see, like, what getting closer, and you're, like, looking at the bottom, you know, looking at the floor. And, dude, we I remember we've done stuff like that. Like, at bigger races, you don't want anyone to know. I mean, do we go to, like, completely different areas to go sauce tires? I mean, it's just kind of how racing is. You know, um, it's like, but to me, when you're in the zone as a racer, you don't have, there's a lot of things that I always felt like that were happening um, during the weekend and during the race. Like, all your senses are, like, super, like, um, aware of what's going on. Like, the guy can be way away from you, and you're like recognizing things that is about to happen. Um, yeah, right here. <laughs> we got, that's built for for the that was podcast. Jackson. Yeah, for yeah, the yeah. podcast. Gotti just put up Bill Belichick with his binoculars. That's me in the but, AE, that's me in the AE pits looking all over the pit tables. Yeah, what's Mayfield doing over there? Yeah, yeah. Well, now it's like you just go, Ryan, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but, we got the walkie talkies too. Yeah, you know that that was um, that's really what's a cool thing about being in at your in your at the peak of your racing game is not only do you know what you're doing, you, you know what the competition's doing. Yeah. That's the point that I'm kind of getting at. Is I always felt like when I was in my peak, not only did I know what was going on in my pits, but you know what your competition's doing. Somebody's either telling you. You either picked up on it yourself, you you made that connection, and uh, you're so you're aware you're you're aware of what's going on, and uh, it's and it's interesting where you know the conversations I've had with whether it's you or Spencer or Mayfield or whoever, how much they know what's going on in the event in general, and not just in their in their world, because to me that's when you're really uh when you're really doing well and you're really in the moment you're you're really learning about what everybody's doing 
mm-hmm. because you feel like you can make strategic moves then to help yourself. You know, you're thinking, you're like, oh, he's going to go out there on that tire this time. Hmm. All right. You know, I know those don't work, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and uh, you're thinking to yourself, you're like, oh, he's going to give it a shot. Hmm. I already tried those. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't work. Uh, oh, he's going with that sauce. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to get uh, give right. him a little extra it's room on the go. start. I'm yeah. giving him All a little right. extra room point. on the, Yeah. One less. Well, I think like when people I've had, I just throughout the whole racing years, it's like someone's like, oh, you know, I'm not going to be able to make it to whatever. And you tell them, you're like, oh, that sucks. But in your mind, you're like, all right, that's just one less point. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You, um, you have fun with, uh, you know, I've talked about this before, like when you're turn marshaling mm. and oh. you're out there and, and when you don't, sometimes they don't call off the, the overall times right yeah and you're kind of like watching the guys your turn marshal and you know what you just ran you've already looked it up you already seen what's going on you're watching the other guys on the track and you're thinking these two guys are on pretty good runs right here yeah. and uh you're like i think that guy's pretty close to my time oh oh, oh he yeah, made yeah, a yeah. mistake he made a little mistake <laughs> That gives me a little more room. Yeah, yeah. And pretty soon he's getting a little sideways in your turn, and you're like, you know, you're like jumping in there, like you're trying to help him, and but you're, you're thinking in your head, oh, I hope this guy crashes. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're still helping, and you, you still want to make helping. sure you're still helping. You want to make sure that you're not screwing the guy, but yeah, in your yeah. head, in your head, you're thinking, oh, this is costing him a couple seconds. <laughs> I remember we were like just wherever, but you're like marshalling and you like see the guy crack. I it's really huge and well at the time like the particular instance like at the nat we were at in Texas for the eight scale. Like I remember marshalling and someone crashed on the step up and I'm like all right, so we're looking at a fifteenth at best here, <laughs> and this is if he cleans it up and gets a good marshal. Uh, yeah, yeah. So no, that part that part of it's pretty fun because you kind of can be like yes. Yeah, you're in your head. You're like, yes. And you're like, oh, here you go, buddy. Get get going. Yeah. Uh, no, the best, the, the thing I do, I still do it to this day. Like, I mean, you could easily be a squid out there on the track. Like, I could come off the track and be like, like absolutely horrid run. And you're marshalling and the guy crashes where you crash. And you're like, God, you suck. How are you crashing right here? Yeah. I do that a couple of times. You're like, dude, twice in a row, the same corner. Yeah. <laughs> squid, hang it up. So... Uh, 2020 talk to us about kind of this run after the, the big 2019 getting into 20 and 21. We know we don't even have to talk about the COVID stuff. I know that kind of started in March, April of 2020, but kind of go through, we still did a lot of races. I remember Mm -hmm. you did a travel out to California again, and you hooked up with Ryan and Spencer did some JBRLs, Mm -hmm. had some good runs out there. Uh, talk to us about that 2020, 2021. (laughs) Yeah, so 2020, we we still had the, so we had the Nitro Challenge still, and um, so we, I went out there. Like I'd say 2019 started where in the beginning of the year I'd go out to Spencer's and uh, run a bunch with him before you know um, I'd like we do some running before CRC, do the CRC, and then go to Reedy Race. So 2020 was like the last year of Reedy Race, or it might have been 21, can't remember. But anyway, so you know we did Reedy Race and. Um, so we had the we stayed out west and did a bunch of running with the guys before Nitro Challenge, and then uh, went home, and then you know so we come back out for the Silver State and do a bunch of running, and then um, yeah so around like kind of the summertime you know uh, we didn't have the nationals that year, so we um, we're doing no we didn't have we didn't have a 2020 field nats do we no nope. yeah so. So we just, I stayed out there that whole summer running. Like I just. How long I were think, you there in, in total? I think, I, I do, I don't know. I'd have to talk to Ronnie, <laughs> but dude, I, I easily have been there long enough to where I could have my own driver's license. <laughs> like I think there was one stand I was there for at least three months. Damn. Like just, I, I remember like Brent, Brent would always call and we'd talk and, He's like, is he paying for groceries yet? And I, I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't always offer, but I did offer, you know, and he, Ronnie's like, no, 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 you know, it's fine, buddy. But, um, 
Dude, I'll tell you what. Ronnie's a mom and a dad. He's like, you know, busting our chops about everything. And then he's in the, you know, kitchen cooking up. And, dude, he's on it. Like, we'll be wrenching. We're, like, watching a movie and wrenching. And, you know, he doesn't say anything. He just brings in uh, me and Spencer bowls of watermelon, like, chopped watermelon to eat. Damn, and you didn't want to leave. No. Well, that's why he was, was there for three months. It was awesome. My mom's like, <laughs> how's it going? Out. you t- my mom was like texting me, how's it going? You know, are you getting tired of being out there? I'm like, I don't know, mom. This guy's bringing me chopped watermelon like every time around 1030. <laughs> it's like, dude, it's fun. So like kind of a sidetrack. So like, dude, when I'm out there, like our typical day, we'd yeah. wake up at, we'd wake up at 645. Huh. And then, I mean, we didn't do this every day, but I'm going to highlight the day. The, yeah, give it, it, give give us the, 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 uh, the I'll give you the full, yeah yeah the high this is definitely the higher side of it we'd wake <laughs> up at 6 45 go to the gym like leave at 7 to go to the gym get to the gym at 7 20 or you know 7 whatever stay till about 8 8 30 get home do nothing for about an hour because we you know we're so out of shape <laughs> and um so we'd take showers and then uh we'd start wrenching it's like you know 10 11 we're kind of like we like so like I'm like wrenching here and he's here. We're obviously like the backs of the chairs are together and we're wrenching and then we kinda go like, What do you want for lunch? <laughs> like it's like you kinda go like, All right, it's lunch time. We're like, All right, what do you want for lunch? And so we'll spend about a couple minutes and dude it it's like always oh, normally Chick fil A or Panda and if Ronnie's <laughs> not cooking anything and then so we do that and then you know we do we'll wrench till like four and then, uh, well, no. So we go get lunch, and we we get back from lunch, and we sit on the couch for about thirty minutes <laughs> because you're so out of shape. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we'll, go, we'll go get lunch, and it's like, oh, oh I don't want to do it. It's like, all right, fifteen minute call. And so, <laughs> so we'll do that, and then we'll wrench, and then it'll be like five o'clock, and and Ryan's like, what? He like walks in. All right, so when do you guys want to eat? And then Spencer always go. Well, as soon as possible, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or like 5.30 or whatever. And he's like, what do you guys want to eat? And then it's always like steak or he'd make like these uh, barbecue kind of like, uh, it's like some Asian sauce wings or um, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, meatloaf or, or not meatloaf, uh, lasagna, Costco oh, lasagna. Dude, yes. it's so dialed. <laughs> and then, uh, dude, the um, I can't. It's his famous meal. I can't remember it. The chicken like, parm. Ronnie was chicken in the chat parm. earlier. Yeah, was the it? chicken parm. Chicken dude, parm. His chicken parm. I've been so, just. I mean, you know, we've all been to so many places. I've never had a better chicken parm than what Ronnie makes. Really? I, I mean, I, I will take it to the grave. Ronnie <laughs> Rivkin makes the best chicken parm. Wow. I don't care what anyone says. He, it's the best chicken parm I've ever had. And Damn. so, you know, so we'll have go, chicken parm. Well, uh, dude, it's nuts. Like, he, you're definitely Man, like spoiled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely makes you feel spoiled. But so, you know, we'll eat dinner, and then, honestly, man, it's like five thirty, six o'clock. So you're like, all right, well, you know, we'll wrench till about seven, and then it's movie time. <laughs> and then we're in bed by like nine thirty. <laughs> Does he uh, warm your PJs old... up in the dryer before bedtime? <laughs> No, yeah, so it's like 9.30, and we're like, we're like watching, well, you can like, we sometimes like, we're watching a movie, and we're just like sitting on the couch, and then I kind of glance over, I'm like, all right, this guy's still awake, and then he'll glance over, I'm still awake, and then if I see him dozing off, I'm like, hey, you do the, well, I think it's time I go to bed. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I, it was, Sounds that was awesome. about, yeah, it was awesome. Will Britton saying, uh, would Ronnie want to adopt a 32 year old in need from nebraska <laughs> ronnie was in the chat earlier so yeah but no dude it was awesome like i'd say the whole <laughs> every just everything about it was <laughs> it was pretty cool but so yeah we do a bunch yeah. of running and um i'd kind of go home and kind of you know the eight scale that was kind of 2020 when i kind of stopped around 10 scale mm-hmm so like I kind of you know throughout after about July or June whenever the nationals are, it kind of tapers off. Like you know you kind of have like we could you kind of have like a race a month. So, so talk to us about this 
decision essentially to not race as much eight scale then or ten scale then uh you kind of um you know because i never i've always considered you being you know about the same in both classes i mean i don't think that i i think you you to me you look like you enjoy eight scale more but i never really thought that your driving stood out so much better in eight scale that it was like oh that's throw 10 scale away like but you kind of made a little decision to kind of um not clean up but just kind of uh, make things a little more simple yeah i mean i obviously don't do this for a living so um mm-hmm. to, it wasn't as hard of a decision as it is for you know the higher ups but um no i just i honestly i just didn't enjoy 10 scale like i didn't you know i didn't enjoy it um, so I was just like, you know, there's a lot of eight scale tracks near me. I enjoy doing eight scale. Um, so I'm like, I'll just do eight scale. I mean, I had a conversation with Brent about it and stuff and we, we worked, you know, there's obviously a couple of things that he, we had to work out to kind of, um, just talk about it kind of stuff. But, um, for the most part, everyone was cool with it. Um, if any, if anything, like I thought, you know, doing more eight scale was getting more in tune with the car, which that wasn't really the goal, but you know, it ended up being that way. Um, but yeah, I just honestly, I just didn't enjoy ten scale. Like that's yeah. just kind of as transparent as I can be. I just <clears throat> didn't enjoy it. I mean, what was what do you think about it? Because I mean, obviously, you started in ten scale. You've done quite a bit of it. Um, mm-hmm. But what do you think? Uh, what do you think was it that uh, that you stopped enjoying because obviously at one time or another you did like it so what was yeah. you know what what was it that kind of like changed your mind or whatever um eight scale i don't <laughs> well you know that vp stuff does smell pretty good but no i i um you know i didn't always and en- i just you know i think i had a string of bad races so that you know being a little i mean i'm more mature than i was now or then so i was kind of like all right you know i just not having fun and didn't really want to do it <clears throat> like i think the cars were awesome like i think associate has you know they're pretty good in the 10 scale market so you know i don't think it was really the cars um it was just you know i wasn't enjoying it and um also you know there's not a whole lot of eight or 10 scale tracks near me um like as eight scale like eight scale i can drive 30 minutes and be at a track yeah which that's way more convenient to do testing and practice hanging with the buddies and running but um <clears throat> no i just it was more convenient to do eight scale and um that was just kind of the big picture it was just like it's a little more convenient to kind do of, eight scale so kind of transitioning a little bit out of 10th into mm-hmm. the one eighth full time and then we're into 2021 which was the year here that we uh, you know we had a lot of racing in 2021 you know we Mm. did pretty much all the race time entertainment events there was uh you were at nitro challenge silver state uh you know you were you did pretty much everything the roar nats we had which was great we had an lcrc i don't know that we've it's gonna i'm gonna have to think back further to a better track (laughs) condition than we had there at lcrc for that race but how did the the 2021 go uh, (laughs) considering you know kind of concentrating only on eight scale and obviously you still did a lot of um you know test and tune sessions staying with spencer you know hooking up with everybody trying to get as much track time as possible yeah so 2021 uh no i mean i i think i did a little bit of 10 scale in the beginning i did um i didn't we did a super cup remember that yeah we did oh i still have that car but (laughs) dude so kind of a short story i we what was it? It was at Beachline, right? Well, we had one at Beachline, but then that might have been before then. But I remember no, the that one was nineteen. At, I remember the one at Newberry where we had the big wall ride. And... Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. So you know, we did. I had some. There were some super cups that we got in, and that was fun. I I remember like there's a picture on a stand that like all of us from two wheel mod driving and do that picture. Like I'm gonna have that frame. Like it's. It's one of those I remember I posted about it. It's one of those photos where in 30 years you're going to look back and be like, "Man, that's, you know, Nate, you know, it's just kind of how it is now when you 
you know, looking at pictures of Kenwald and, mm-hmm. you know, Dunbar, all the, you know, all those, you know, just kind of, I wouldn't say old school, but just, you know, the 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, I, that picture to me is cool because it's, you know, me, you, Lee, Julian, Paul. Um, it's kind of the Florida, the Florida homies. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's cool. Florida like I, I really enjoy that picture. I think Julian's mom took that picture. Like I that's a picture I really like. Like that was a cool picture. But no, so twenty twenty one was SIC. Um was in the mains. Didn't really have any breakout runs. Um twenty and then so we did SIC and then so it went into f- the DNC and um dnc was pretty good i was you know i had some speed i think i was in the bees and then i was in the main for e-buggy um so that was pretty fun you that's know. good that's a really good run there yeah thanks yeah it was e-buggy was awesome um that was kind of started the whole thing i shipped my stuff back and that was when i lost that box the you know the mystery box i lost like I lost four engines and oh, wow. all my winter clothes and my e buggy. That was a cluster, dude. I, I, we just, it's still missing. It's, I'm, I haven't, I don't have the box. Oh, man. Yeah. It was pretty, it, it, it sucked. <laughs> like it, I was definitely kind of at the time, I was like, kind of like when I realized it wasn't really going to be happening, like I was going to get the box back, I was just like, all right, that stuff doesn't exist anymore. Like, just kind of have to put it away. So, mm. it sucked, but, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, one of those things that happens with, you know, how hectic the shipping stuff is now. But, <clears throat> so, March, there, I don't think there's anything in March. Like, there's Desert Classic, but nothing a whole lot. And then we did PNB. PNB was fun. Um, was in the mains, and I think... I don't. I think the only mains I missed was, um, like Silver State, and the Nationals. Like I think everywhere else I was just. I mean I was in the mains, but I wouldn't say I was lightning on fire. But you know I was. I had some speed. Um, so you know we did uh, Silver State. That was awesome. That was that was kind of a funny thing. Like we're all kind of in between qualifying and <clears throat> Jimmy Babcock comes on the mic and he's like, "All right, everyone, the mask mandates off and." We all throw our masks off and, <laughs> you know, everyone's cheering. Like, that was definitely a highlight of the weekend. Um, so, you know, we did Silver State. I did that. That, to me, that Silver State was probably one of the best tracks I've driven on. You think so? I. So we're yeah. talking 2021 Silver State mm-hmm. track inside the hotel. <laughs> it was um, the, um, I don't know what the hotel is. The South Point. Yep. But yeah, that was like where you came down the straightaway and you made the right hand or did the triple and then came back to you and did the whoop section. Dude, that was 100%. I don't care what anybody says. That was the best track Silver State's had like in that in in that in the indoor facility. That yeah. was an awesome track. Like it was it just my car was working, you know, I was feeling pretty good. Thank you. Um it was fun mixing up the lines. It was just it was awesome. Like it's just one of those races where you're just like, man, this is pretty cool. So, you know, we did Silver State, had a lot of fun there. That was oh, that was the year that me and Spencer were telling you, you know, we like started we took out a hundred bucks and went to the casino and we were like up. It was like every day we were gaining money and then it was after the main day. Spencer actually I think got out even. But I remember it was like main night or main day. We everyone got done. We're at the casino after the mains till like three in the morning having fun and i remember we were getting to the airport in the morning spencer's like so what'd you win i was like yeah i'm actually in the red here mm-hmm. and he goes oh i made you know whatever so no that Is was here? that was yeah that's it yeah that was dude such an awesome track like that tabletop was fun then you'd go way outside and along the cushion and then um you could either cut inside or go wide dude it was so rad Straight away, was pre- if you didn't hug or go wide, it was pretty gnarly. <laughs> hug, yeah. I can't, I mean, I kind of see some of the spots I crash. I'm just like, you just watching, you're just like, and knowing how it was, you're just dude. That double got so bad at like towards the end of like end of the days because uh, 
uh, which Joe Joey would go out there and you know fix the track, and dude, towards the end of the day, dude, you couldn't do like the double, the triple was gnarly. <clears throat> dude, it was just a cluster. Like at the end of the day, when the track was hammered. But no, this was probably one of the best Silver State layouts, layouts I've driven. I mean, the dirt's awesome, and it's so, just not something we see a lot. So you oh. like Silver State? Mm. Had a pretty good weekend, and then um, where we move on from there, we kind of get into the summer, the summer stuff a little bit, nationals, that type of thing. Yeah, so the summer uh, is June, and we're running. Um, we were running at me, Spencer Mayfield, Adam, Drake, Rhonda, and a bunch of other and Tanner Denny and his father. Um, we're all running at Tony Schumacher's track, and I think I don't think we went to the Fear Farm. I think we ran a little bit at the Dobie track where the Nationals will be this year. Yeah, um, that's Tim Lime's track, I think. And we're running there, doing a bunch of running, and um, yeah, so we go to LCRC um for the nationals that was honestly like i thought that was a pretty good national like i i wouldn't say i had any awesome like i i kind of sucked like that triple triple in the middle like dude it it ruined my week like i just couldn't get through it from the first lap i did on the track to the last lap it was it was kind of the like you know i don't know what the cliche saying is but dude it it was just that killed my runs but talk talk we'll kind of stop for a second and say so everyone kind of has this i think on occasion but what's the situation you think when you you get on a track that either one you don't like but you have to go back to or two a section of the track that just has your number like how do you think that um you can kind of right the ship in those situations. You know, I mean, I I see people, I I did it in my racing. Um, I've had uh, where you just know you're going to a certain track and you're just like, "Ah, here we go again. (laughs) And then, so one, how do you get around that? And then two, when there's a section on the track that you know is just kicking your ass every single time, it's in your head, of course, it gets in your head. And, but how do you think that the best way to, to kind of work through those type of things? Um, I, I don't know if I'd be the right person to ask, but Quit. I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> all right, Brent, I'm just going to pet Spencer, man. <laughs> but no, I, I don't know. Like, I just remember, like I had one full session on the track and, uh, Brent and all those guys were watching. It's like, all right, this kid sucks in the whoop section. So we got to <laughs> figure something out. And Brent, for the next practice, Brent's like talking me through it. And he's like, all right, well, if you go this way, you can do this. And I'm like, <laughs> I tell Brent, it's like, I know what you're saying. And I know, I know, I've seen it. I know. I just can't do it. Like, I don't think I said I couldn't do it, but I definitely was telling him, like, I just, like, I just don't, whatever it is, I, like it's just i'm not doing it and it was dude it just that was just it kicked my butt the whole weekend i think if i could go back i think honestly i don't care in those practice sessions i would do the section and then cut the track and go back around like i what are they gonna do like it's just practice so like i think i like i felt pretty good everywhere else yeah we talking practice (laughs) no i felt you know I would say, you know, up to par, you know, with where I should be everywhere else on the track. And it was just the triple, triple that, you know, sucked. And then obviously, you know, like I didn't do what I thought, well, what I'm thinking now I should have done. So like, you know, I made the whole everywhere else on the track. I was so frustrated from this one section that, you know, it caused me to mess up. But yeah. um, no, I, I think if I could go back, it would be, you know, jump the you know somehow get through the section you know with you know mercy of god and <laughs> cut the track and figure it out again until like you do it right and then like that's the you know, if like i was basically like if i could go back i'd be like, all right triple triple all right crash that's not gonna work double 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 all right that kind of worked let's see if we can triple double single out or whatever it was just i just it was a hard section i just i wasn't ha- dude i was not having it like, I told Brent, I was like, I don't care, dude. I'll go out there with a shovel and steamroll that thing. 
overnight. <laughs> like, dude, it was, I just sucked so bad. Like, we were going to the airport and Prince like, so what's everyone's thoughts on the weekend? And I'm like, if we never raced a whoop section track, honestly, I wouldn't care. <laughs> like, I was just so frustrated from that. It, it, uh, but other than that, man, um, Kevin and Christy, they had an awesome weekend. You know, they made it awesome. We had the food trucks and everything. Um, that was awesome. We're, you know, cutting up with the guys. Um, that was, I honestly, that was probably one of the better nationals. I mean, there was obviously some drama, but you're going to have that with everything. Yeah. But, um, it was probably one of the better nationals that I've attended. It was, you know, aside from results, I had fun. You know, I pitted for Spencer in the buggy main, and um, that was, you know, f- super fun. We got to watch Aiden do really good. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of positives to that race. Oh, boy. Um, All right, so see right here, I had a pretty good line. I'd cut back in, you know, Max for staff oof. and stuff. Right there, right there, dude. All right, when this car we're following gets to there, Dude, so bad. So this section was pretty good, but if you ca- you could like case it, so like all this yeah. is pretty fun, you know, little like in ground whoop section. So you're coming on. All right, so this is where it starts. So you're coming on straight away. So where this guy goes right here, that's double double. See, okay. double double. But the last <laughs> one. So hold, pause the video. Go back. Go back. All right, wait, wait, wait. wait. I'll I'll Brent tell you this really quick because uh... I it's still stuck in my mind. I can tell you how much it. Me, meant to me that I'm this like, is when the track was kind of fresh right here too no th- yeah this was sunday so it, it rained remember it yeah. rained yeah and they had to work on the track so yeah the track was like pretty prime so like if you went so like oh, if you're looking at... oh, okay go ahead okay so like um when if you like went down the straight i'll wait till this guy gets the straight just pause it when you can see the straightaway in that section like when he's basically going into the corner. But I mean this section was pretty fun. I didn't think it was pretty that bad. So like pause it. Here, here. we go. All right. All right. So all right, everyone, this is Brent Tilkey. So basically, <laughs> if you're where that guy is there, right that here. car, right. and you kind of followed like a buggy and a half off the pipe, that's triple triple material. But you gotta be on it. And but if you're a little if you're too narrow to the pipe and you you know have a sh- you know a short um like a you know a narrow more narrow apex right then it's double du- it's well honestly it's prey but double <laughs> double double if you can like double you know basically double 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 but so you got to come out here a little bit yeah you gotta yeah kind of had to swing wide a little bit to do the triple but also I mean it's an off road track so there's holes. See. Let me see if I could find like Mayfield's main. You know what main were you in here? Let's see. Uh... Well, don't watch me. I'm not. A... Oh no, let's not bring that back up. Yeah, yeah well, I won't. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> no, we want Jackson uh... to sleep well tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, right here, the third video. That's probably gonna have the main final. Maybe yeah. Skip through all that. So yeah, I'd fast forward to, like the end. So that's the quarter or the half, the semis rather. How do I do this? So, yeah, this is, yeah, this is about right. So, yeah, these are the fast guys. Oh, here's the main. No, this is the junior final. Oh, I don't know where I'm at here. We see how nuts the track got. Look how much high grip it got in just one day from the yep. rain. It was, it was insane. But basically, yeah, dude, it was the whole triple. Like this guy's section right here? Yeah, yeah. But see, it was weird. If you ju- over jumped it, yeah. then it would like pancake the like from the front to the like front middle of the chassis and pop you weird. Dude, it was so lame. <laughs> All right. Sorry. But no, but dude, it was. It was a fun weekend, regardless. I had fun. Everyone had a good time. We date. Uh, J Concepts debuted the new F2 Truggy body. It worked good. Yeah. Mayfield won with it, um, and they won buggy too. So uh, it was a good weekend, regardless of anything. I think Spencer got. Did he get third in truck? I don't remember. Uh, I thought he had. A... Anyways, whatever. It was a good weekend. 
So fast forward past nationals. We go to Wicked Weekend. Wicked Weekend was fun. That was the race me and Rich went to. Um, so that was fun. Mm-hmm. And then um, we did the Southern Nationals the next. That would be in September. So that was um, that was you know fun too. The track was awesome. Um, and then AMS. AMS was my last race for Associated. Oh. That was in um, November, right? That was in November. That was my last race. That was um that that was that weird format that was actually kind of cool with the whole um your qualifying was like seeding. Yeah. And that was that kind of j- different format stuff, but that was I mean, I thought that was I mean, dude, you ran we had so much runtime. So like I think if someone wanted to go to an event and like, you know, I want the max amount of runtime kind of thing, like that was definitely the race. Like, I mean, you could go to the PNB, but dude, it's that whole 24 hour practice is insane. But you don't get the more like race track time, more so. It PNB more features more practice time, whereas the AMS really featured a whole lot of racing kind of track time where you're on the clock. But um, that was a fun weekend. You know, that was uh, kind of a bittersweet weekend with it being kind of the last race. But it was, I, I think. I don't know. I didn't really care what everybody thought, but I think so. I think people knew like it was kind of my last race. Um, I'm not sure. Kind of that was kind of when like more towards the end of last year, I kind of stayed off Facebook. So I kind of was like, you know, not really. Um, I did my social media post, but I didn't really see what everyone was saying. So I don't know. But um, that was for, that was my last race. And then, you know, I. um you know, I got my new cars, my new HB cars. So let's stop right before that. Um, what uh, one thing I will say about um, what I've noticed about your social media posts is I think I think you do probably one of the better jobs of your uh, after race report. I think that it's it's usually um, grammatically good. It's um, and I think it, it sounds really good on your behalf. Is there any reason that that it's like that? Does your well, mom do it? Or like, no, what, no. This, this? I just hate it. Like, I, you know, I just have a thing where it's like if some if the companies are, you know, paying for most of your, you know, helping you out to get there, it's like, all right, you know, they're obviously going to know what happens. But it's just kind of like something the drivers, it's just what you do. Yeah, you just write. I mean, you just write the race report. It's not hard. No, it's like I mean, dude, Mayfield does it while he's driving. Like the guy is insane. He does but, it all, man. Yeah, dude, the guy is nuts. But no, it <laughs> it's just it's something you do. It's I've always enjoyed the whole race report thing. I'm that's kind of a chick thing. Like I'm just super good at it. Probably doesn't. It's not super manly, but I'm really good at like finding all intricate words and you know, like uh-huh. I. It's just I enjoy doing it. So You're no, like Jason with he, his press releases, he can yeah, yeah, make yeah. a body clip sound awesome. I'm I'm here. It's, I'm typing right now. This luxury high grit, this luxury low profile, lightweight, yeah, yeah. body clip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can. I mean, I'm working on these today. I've been here since like eleven o'clock typing press releases up for new products. So I can definitely uh, sympathize or uh, go right along with Jackson here. Yeah, yeah I, just, I think it, I think it's fun. Yeah. I, yeah, I think it's fun, you know, doing the whole, you know, you're kind of checking all the boxes, you know, you kind of tell how the weekend went, talk about the layout, you know, you just kind of check all the boxes. It's fun. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I kind of. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think you do a good job with those. I think they come off really well, uh, you know, and then you kind of went into, you kind of had your, uh, saying goodbye to uh, Team Associated post, and so um, you know there there's some you know there's some people out there that think that this whole you know driver announcement, driver departure, um, these race reports. I think there's some uh, some people out there that think it's all stupid. Mm. And they they make fun of um, uh, drivers and and the this 
this thing, but wow. it depends I think, who's doing it. <laughs> to, well, to, to me. Well, yeah, yeah, and you know, <laughs> and I'm not saying that there's some things aren't out of place or out of character, but I think that there comes a time where if you are into this on a level that you have to show some uh, appreciation or some thanks to the people that are helping you. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, you know, obviously Jackson's in a situation where he has had some uh, good and great moments with associated and the companies that uh, surrounding that for him. (laughs) And, and I think it's important to say, Hey, you know, I am leaving this particular team. This is, you know, what I'm going to do, or I appreciate these guys or whatever the case may be. I think it is important to get that done properly. And, and usually before everybody else knows, I think it's kind of nice to do that. And then you can kind of move on to your new, uh, uh, whatever your new opportunity is, but you don't do it too early. There's some people that are out there in September uh, you know, their contract's really supposed to run through December, but in September they're already out racing on live RC with their transponder hooked up, running their stuff that they're not supposed to be running. And I think that's not really the way you're supposed to do it. I understand sometimes you got to get a little bit of a head start, <clears throat> um, getting well, how the cars you do that built. before your uh, contract, before you sign. So, yeah, I mean, I think there's some people that, they will release the vehicles to you. They'll release the equipment to you. They'll get it to you. So you can start building it, get your bodies painted, all that stuff. And I understand mm. oh, gotcha. that people have to be kind of hit the ground running when the new year goes. But you don't go to a race with their transponder and everybody in public, um, you know, kind of before the right time. But So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I thought the, the social media post was good. It kind of got your information out there you got to say you know uh move on from that from that chapter of rc racing and kind of enter into another one yeah i mean obviously um you know brent and everyone associated i mean richard kurt um even the all the engineers and you know paul you do there's so many people um it was awesome. I mean, I I couldn't have asked for a better support group. Um, it was just, I wouldn't say I really left because of that. I just kind of, you know, I thought a change was needed. And um, I wouldn't even say the opportunity is wasn't even a factor. It was more just, you know, I just wanted to change. And um, so, yeah, for, you know, 2022, um, Hot Body is racing hp heat wave and um it's i've you know i had a couple days on the cars now you know we're getting ready for sic this um i think what's today sunday so this week you know we leave thursday um so it's been it's been good um i wouldn't say there's i wouldn't say the ae car sucks or anything i i think um i'm definitely finding a a, a groove with the new HB cars and uh, whatnot, but um, still, you know, staying with J Concepts, we, you know, signed the guy, you know, we, you know, you flew me down on the private jet, you know, to sign the contract <laughs> yeah. and whatnot. But uh, no, so I'm staying with J Concepts and um, I am um, teaming up with Mernin Modified Engines uh, for engines. He's basically mo- uh, doing some modifying work to um, running an OS, in- OS engines, which is still good. So that was kind of my goal is, you know, if I'm going to run Nitro, I don't want to run anything other than OS uh, brand or OS, you know, just kind of originality. OS-based. Yeah, OS-based. So that's good. And then I'm still with, you know, VP, uh, Futaba, Eric uh, Everett with Easy Customs. He does an awesome job. Bob with Stick It One. Um, let's see. So I left Reedy. That was, the you know, kind of the tie. So I went back to Trinity which has been so far the products i've been using have been awesome like it was kind of i mean when you change eight scale electronics especially the escs and stuff um you know that that's always a you know kind of a question in your head is you know um just like you know i kind of hope everything you know works and you know you don't want to have failures 
Um, so, so far, everything's been awesome. I mean, it's probably, I, I'm going to be honest, it's way, it was a pretty, it's a pretty smooth ESC. Like, it, I was pretty blown away. But, um, so everything there has been pretty good. Um, probably leaving somebody out. I don't have anything in here. <laughs> well, I'm while probably... you're thinking of it, tell me about this this HB heat wave thing. So, you know, obviously we got you know you're going on to the team this year. Um, I, I see. I've seen kind of uh, one of my jokes in my head. I guess was, man, there's this HB heat wave. Sure is hitting the uh, the northeast here. You know, we got guys in the northeast. I know that have ran. Uh, associated in the past they're they're kind of locking in here with some more hb stuff and this is all kind of on the heels of hb losing david ronafolk here or whatever the agreement was where he's not going to be running hb anymore and, and he's really kind of the main man mm -hmm. um of of that car obviously the one that won the one of the ones that won the worlds with it uh and <clears throat> probably one of the top three eight scale drivers in the world easily. Um, but what do you think it is about, what is it about this car, this HB car that is making it so attractive for people to want to want to run for them? And I guess I keep in, in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, I see the car run. I think it works really well. Uh, Rona folks dominated with it. Even when Ty ran the older uh, versions, he was awesome mm -hmm. with it. Um, Cole Ogden, we've obviously seen him, uh, you know, run with the fastest in the nation or in the world with it. Um, but you go to e-buggy, you know, from Nitro, you go to e-buggy and, and I think the e-buggy is good, but I feel like more of the people really identify with that car for Nitro Mm -hmm. but they also run the e-buggy and i've seen it run well mm -hmm. but then you go to truggy and it's not really known as much on the truggy side even though it is mm -hmm. a good truggy you don't it's not as known it's really like to me i feel like people just love nitro buggy so much that they're almost willing to run the hb just because they want that nitro buggy so i guess my yeah. question is what is it about this buggy that works so good? Dude, I'm, I mean, I was pretty, I mean, I, when I, I, you know, I test with Cole a bunch and, uh, you know, we're, you know, no strangers like Ryan and Spencer, you know, they run their cars all day and they're like, oh, you know, let me try your car. It's just kind of part of it. So I've done that with Cole and I've always just like, I mean, it was kind of like, I was just, I was, I would spend all day on my car. And it would be like, all right, you know, this feels pretty good. You know, I'm doing about the same fast lap or faster than what I normally do. So I'm like, all right, you know, this stuff feels pretty good. And my consistency's there. And I'm going to be honest, dude. I would drive Cole's car and he would show up halfway through the day and just throw it down. And it's just like, I'd go, I, I dude, I went five tenths faster every time. Mm -hmm. Or not, you know, give or take. I mean, I'm obviously exaggerating every time. But, you know, give or take. It was just. It was so – there's something about the car driving it that, to me, feels more at ease in my mind. It – and it, I know it's just RC cars, but it, to me, feels – I enjoy driving the car, and to me, that's what matters the most. I really – like, I would say, like you were mentioning earlier, my tent scale kind of driving is where you kind of saw the – you know, it's like, all right, you kind of driving style suits 10 scale. Well, I think the HB car, like it almost takes a 10 scale driver mentality where it's, you know, with it being a C hub car, it obviously like, um, I enjoyed. So like at, when you hit the steering wheel on the C hub car, it basically that's all the steering you're going to have almost at the wheel, but it's never more than that. Like the, like the, I like that the rear end doesn't, you know, the pillbox car is more rear end driven. Um, everyone knows that. So it, it just, the rear end always just sticks and plants, which I've always enjoyed driving Cole's car. It's always done that. Um, my car has done that. Uh, the couple of days I tested this past week. Um, I mean, dude, I went to Loganville 
and ran and I was running 1.75 degrees of toe, so like no toe virtually. Mm -hmm. And I had more grip than I've ever had in my AE car in that same condition. Like, I mean, I've been there long enough. I think I am, I think I am given the um, opportunity to just say what I think feels right and wrong at that track and everything, and the conditions I see. And um, it, I had more grip, and I didn't have that much toe. And I think that car naturally had side bite in it, which I think that's might just be a C hub thing. Again, I'm, you know, it's my first C hub car, so I don't know everything. Um, but it, it had a lot of side bite in it, and I like that. Um, I, I, I haven't got a chance to test um, just kind of like, like we were talking earlier, like the triple Ds and stuff. We, you know, I haven't got that opportunity yet, but that opportunity will come. Um, but I think there's some opportunity there to try some different tires. And, um, you know, there, it's it's going to be fun learning. I think it's not always going to be on a high. I mean, there's obviously – it's a roller coaster. Um, so, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm prepared for that. But, um, you know, I, I've, I've enjoyed, like, I, I would say the last, you know, like, honestly, the last six months, I, I haven't really had that much fun, like, driving. And I've kind of, like, lost some of the, you know, you know I kind of want to go to the track. But, um, you know, towards the end, I was kind of going more to the track and whatnot. But, dude, I was driving this car, I mean, all the cars, and I was just, I, it's some of the most enjoyable times I've had these last couple of days at the beginning of the year. I've, I've just enjoyed myself. I, it could be some of the new car syndrome, which I'm sure it is. That's, I think that's with everything, but, um, no, I've, I've enjoyed it. I, I don't think, um, it's, it's kind of funny, like Mayfield, you know, was ta I was texting Mayfield the other day and he's like, you know, he, he's like, you're not expecting to come out of the gate and, you know, battle with me, are you? <laughs> and I was kind of like telling him like, no, but I, I think You're like, like no? I told him, I was like, dude, I'm probably still going to blow out with a minute to go. But I think from w the first, you know, lap to the, you know, one minute to go, I think I can do a little bit better. I was like, I'm still probably going to blow out. That's just kind of, you know, just <laughs> being Joe. I told him, I was like, that's not what it's for, but I, I enjoy the car. Um, I would say like looking at this picture right here, I mean, I'm going to be honest. The one thing I don't, really per se enjoy it's not really a huge deal but i don't really like i you get pretty spoiled with, like the quick access diffs that the associate car had um it's kind of like to do the dish you got to take like so it's two screws and, and then move the shocks and then disconnect the sway bar where's the sway bar that was the same with the ae and the and the shocks but you you kind of mess you have to take the a block off and then a lo some lock nuts that kind of hold the suspension blocks on uh, but other than that, I mean, the car, it, like, I've had a couple of days of running on it. It's, you know, everything's been, so far has been good. I'm obviously expecting it not to be, you know, perfect every time I hit the track. But, you know, it so far has been a breath of fresh air. And everyone on the team has been super helpful. You know, and now we have uh, Mason Fuller. He's joined, he joined him and Caden, um, <clears throat> Pavitas. So, you know, I think it'll be kind of a fun year yeah i mean i think um <clears throat> you know that's kind of what i was bringing up is a lot of these uh, guys getting that car um you know, up and down mm -hmm. and it's just i guess it's it's just been really surprising to me that um you know especially without david uh, now there, and then so many people wanting to run this car that I think that there, there's obviously something attractive to it, um, mm -hmm. more attractive to it than, um, than just the top of the line driver like a David. Um, mm -hmm. There's something else about the way the car works, or um, the deals people are getting, or you know, which is obviously a factor, mm -hmm. um, but. Um, but it's a good car. I mean, I've seen it run a long time mm -hmm. now and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's ran well, but, um, uh, like you said, there's something about the way the car's handling, I guess. And people are experiencing some of the things that you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, 
been kind of um, interesting, like, kind of I joined the team, and it's like, oh, a bunch of other people are kind of joining the team. So it's kind of interesting, to say the least. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I ran the truck a bunch this past week, and it was, I mean, me and Joe were, I mean, me and, I mean, uh, Thornhorse and I went down. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, okay. I ran the truck, and at first, it it needed work. Like, I, 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 I spent about a day and a half on it. Yeah. And uh, for, you know, the amount of time I had on the car or the truck and, you know, the track I was at, it, I, I feel like I got it, you know, up to race pace. Like, I felt pretty good. I was doing, you know, consistent tank to tank, you know, running the same lap times um you know in that you know kind of same bracket and um it was it was good like i really enjoyed the truck um there are like it comes with like 12 degree caster blocks which that's so much steering dude so i i like i i started i put i just immediately threw on 15s like <laughs> yeah. i that's where i started like I, that 12 like it's obviously like i kind of had some more vocal opinions from you know suggestions not rather opinions from cole He's like, oh, you know, don't put those on. So that's kind of more, like he explained, kind of, you know, gave me the rundown of how the car, you know, general, like a general kind of overlay of, you know, what you're going to kind of run. And he was like, you're not even going to really use those 12 and a half degree caster blocks. Mm. Oh, thanks for putting them in the kit. Yeah, yeah. that's. I, I kind of was like, <laughs> they're in the kit and we're not even running them. It's like, dude. So uh, kind of going back to something that kind of happened today, um, gonna kind of get your take on this this is kind of not necessarily your on your rc career but uh you know you mentioned earlier you know talking to ryan he's like you don't think you're gonna be running with me right away or whatever you know just as kind of fun you guys are playing around but yeah um you know you know it looks like you know we had a big win today by tom rinnernick oh uh crc Um, yeah he he won the two-wheel mod class um he he TQ'd and won it, and he won a seventeen five buggy. Same race, and I think he did pretty well in four wheel. He got, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe he did pretty well. Anyway, yeah. I mean the 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 bottom line was he won the first or the first two mains in in uh, the two wheel mod class, and this is coming off of a, um, you know, he decided not to resign with TLR, mm-hmm. and just kind of had a. You know, he won the Reedy race and four wheel drive, which is a a big win. Everybody you've been to the Reedy race, you you know, everyone wants to win the open class of the Reedy race, but nothing's really like beating um you know Spencer, Dakota, Aiden Horn, you know, beating mm-hmm. all these guys at one time on the track, um, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. And, you know, kind of um you know, a little Cinderella story, if you will. Um, you know, he, he obviously chose not to re-sign with TLR, goes to the first race of the year, um, borrows, I believe, Paul Sicarello's X-Ray two-wheel buggy, and oh. he um, he won the class. And I was like, you know, th- stuff like this doesn't happen very often. Yeah. And I'm just kind of getting to get your take on, um, you know, trying to decide what to do um <clears throat> as a driver and then being able to come into a year uh where you you kind of have this opportunity to to kind of put it to your old sponsor with a with a you know your best finish ever and mm. he actually was able to do it you know not that there's all this animosity both ways but in, in a way as a racer you're thinking i'm gonna put it to these guys right and then he was able to kind of do it. I mean, uh, what do you think about uh, being in uh, not your situation, but his situation and kind of getting something done like that? I, I've been to CRC, so I know how hard that track is. Hmm. And I think it's pretty, I mean, I've been, I, I haven't really watched it, but I, I've seen some laps and talked to Spencer and dude, that's, it's awesome. I think being able to, you know, come out basically, you know, you don't really have a per se program, you know, it's just kind of you're running somebody else's car. That's that just shows like skill and talent, really. 
Um, I didn't know he won. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, he TQ'd and won, and he won the first two mains. The first main, he was racing Spencer. Spencer was all over him. Uh, Spencer gave him, you know, good room. Uh, mm -hmm. They didn't really hit or anything, but Tom ran a little better race. The second main, Tom made a mistake, and Drayton actually got around him. Who Drayton is faster every year. He was probably faster when you were there. Mm -hmm. um, and in this year, he was actually right there. He actually got in the lead. And Tom like just threw a wicked, wicked pass on him on the last lap, and then wins the second main. I mean, it. I was pretty shocked to be honest that not only is it hard to put a, a wicked pass on somebody or any kind of a move, but like you said, that track is hard. Yeah. Huh. On the last lap. Yeah, he got him on the last <laughs> lap and wins it in the in the two mains and. Um, wow. so not only is that kind of a little bit of a story going on here, but yeah. then he also ran 17, five and he TQ'd in one seventeen five buggy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't, I haven't seen anybody in a very long time run those two classes at one race and be able to win them. Not that, you know, my opinion is that if a top of very top of the line modified driver goes to the 17 five class, mm -hmm. I think they're going to do well. Uh -huh. um, I think if you can make the a main and modified, then you can probably win the stock class. Um, yeah. And, um, but it's, I haven't seen it very, I've really haven't seen it in a long time where somebody was able to win stock and mod. Yeah, that's definitely, I think, um, it, with the stock thing, that I would say that's probably more like, because I think he works for R1. Mm -hmm. So I would say they're probably, he's probably running the stock class to kind of push the stock motor and show people that, you know, it's competitive. But also, like you mentioned, if dude is kicking TQ of the modified class, it's like the stock class. It's not that the stock guys aren't fast. It's just you're a modified, you know, quote unquote driver. I mean, there's that whole discussion there, but yeah. Um, yeah. I, regardless, it's, <clears throat> that's a pretty awesome weekend. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> but you know, then you got, you know, that whole, not only you're basically borrowing somebody's car, of course it's set up. Well, it's a great car, Paul Sicarello. I mean, if I'm going to let people work on my cars, he's definitely going to be somebody I'm going to let work on my car. I'm, I won't have a problem taking a car from him anyway. Um, but yeah, so gotti has got the, got the race up here. A2, there's Drayton in oh, the lead. Drayton in the, okay. And then, uh, this is Tom with the all white body. So we must be entering. Yeah, yeah. So the, this is the last lap coming up. Yep. So the, the timing and scoring is all the way at the top left up there, the, right? They pass the line here. Okay. So Tom's all over him. Oh, sending it there a little bit, yeah, yeah. thinking, getting a little brave. Oh, Last lap, brap. Oh, I just got like some arm pump. <laughs> he just, I, I've been in that situation too. I know it's not easy, but dude, he just completely left the door open. But that's, that's a, and that's a real difficult back section. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Grip. Well, and you can't, I, my dad's been watching the race the whole weekend. And he said that today or yesterday, there's been like, because obviously it snows there and it, it got really warm or warmer than it's been. Mm -hmm. And he said that there's been like water droplets, which that always happens there, but more than normal there. Yeah. So I'm sure the dust, I mean, dude, the dust and tents go when you're running slicks. I mean, you know, all the circumstances and everything that goes into it. But yeah, it looked like he got out of the line and got some dust. And rather than spinning out, just didn't even, you know, couldn't really afford to, you know, didn't have the grip there yeah i mean i know right. um that's just kind of amazing that you get this kind of a win coming off of essentially not you know I, i'm sure he thought he was part of tlr's future right uh tom um, yeah mm -hmm. and then kind of like going away from this into this sort of i mean he's a pro privateer essentially r when r1 mm -hmm. his motor sponsor he works there they I think they just basically told him run whatever you want. Yeah, we even flipped there. We made him. Yeah, so that's where too? he was leading and crashed. Oh my god! No, no, he was behind Drayton. 
Okay, so yeah, he right made a mistake. There. He Sorry. must have made a mistake earlier, though. Yeah, he did. He made one mistake, got out of the lead, then he crashed and then he there. Catches back up. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, he's. So this is a a minute fifty left now, but <clears throat> yeah. So you, you you kind of go from a, a situation where you think you're in uh, in the long term plans. Maybe you're the next up of being a pro, mm. which to me, pro means that you're getting paid. Um, you know, a lot of people can run pro class, but, tr but pro truly means you're getting paid. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think everybody hopes to be on that level, but you know, here's a situation where he didn't sign back with TLR. They probably didn't offer him what he was hoping. Mm -hmm. And then you're in a position where, so there's the crash. Makes the system back. Yeah. Okay. That's the same. Okay. 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 Yeah. I just rewind. <clears throat> and then now he, <laughs> gets in a position where he's able to grab a borrow a car go here and win with a competitor's car how far back he is though yeah that's, um, dude that's huge so i just i just found this so in did interesting wreck? No? no wow how did he <laughs> how's he catch up to him Gosh. yeah that's i mean when you're racing yeah. 10 scale though as you know i mean you brush a pipe it's like yeah. you're out of the groove like yeah. And, oh well. Yeah. Right there, right there. There's a little brush. He just brushed it. Yep. Yeah. Just did. But I mean, look at. I mean, the, he he basically got. <clears throat> he pulled in like. Oh, oh two wheel. One and two there. So right now you got 25 seconds left. As a driver, you're just going. Look at that. Heartbeat. Heartbeat to 200. Oh my gosh! You're just going nuts. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now you're just... thinking, okay, last lap. This is where you hope the race announcer is on his game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And doesn't screw you on how many laps you got left oh yeah 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 where you kind of like all right this last time i can kind of not go for it yeah so i don't know so look so wow i, I don't think know. i think well, drayton, he spun out right there he kind of well, like well i think drayton night. i think drayton basically he didn't send it off of that single in yeah. the back like very hard into that chicane because i'm sure the the chances of flat landing and you're making a right hander and traction rolling is big, right? Yeah. So he probably checked up just a tiny bit, and Tom basically sent it in there. And then uh, you can see he's on the track here. Like, um, <laughs> wow. But anyway. Pretty cool stuff. Anyway, I thought yeah. that was a kind of an interesting story. Somebody that was you know, getting a debut running, um, and, uh, getting, getting a big win. Wow. That's insane. So anyway, going back to, um, your, uh, we'll kind of finish off with you here. You, you got a, uh, we had another driver, Joe Bornhorse. He made a big move in, uh, we'll call it the off season. Mm. He's going to be running for S works now. And you guys were able to do some testing recently. So this is kind of like your opportunity. Um, just tell us how the, the what track you went to and how the, the days went with Joe. And then we can kind of wrap it up. You can thank your all your new sponsors and everybody. And then we can uh, get going into the next race. Yeah, so um, me and Joe were... Uh... We went down to Savannah, Georgia at the Phil Hard Raceway, a uh, pretty historic race, racetrack that's you know, been around for years. And, um, yeah, we just kind of did a bunch of running. Um, it was pretty high grip. It was, like, almost, I would say it kind of it felt like a Florida track. It's kind of, you know, kind of tight, high grip, and, you know, a little dusty, and the weather was beautiful, dude. Gosh, it was awesome, like. I think it was 55, 60, like, you know, kind of chilly, but it was, it was good weather. And, you know, Patrick Rossiter and um, I think the guy's name was Drew and, you know, all those guys there, they were so helpful. And, you know, they came, blow, helped us pull the track off and we obviously blew the track off too, but it was just like, you know, they were just kind of doing whatever they, you know, kind of to do whatever to help. So it was super nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of just went through the motions of you know he was breaking in his cars i was um breaking in my cars and everything was good um it kind of we i mean i would say not really so much for me and but for joe too you know you can kind of 
have that other driver there to push you and kind of get that race pace out of you. It's kind of hard to do that by yourself. Um, so it was, it was good. I mean, me and Joe were, we had some awesome battles and our stuff. I'd say both of our stuff was working pretty good for the track. Um, we kind of floated around different J concepts tires, but I, I, the fastest we ran was, um, aqua detoxes. That was, Kind of like if you wanted to go and be like, all right, you know, let's go for a hot lap kind of thing and blow the track off. <clears throat> and then it was like one run at like, like a scuffed in set of aqua detox. Those were money. It was, it was unbelievable. Like just how much drive and how much grip we had. Um, but it was, it was, I had fun. It was kind of, I haven't really ever done that with Joe. I mean, we're good buddies, but you know, I've, never really kind of just one-on-one practice with him so that was you know super fun to do and kind of get you know he we bounced ideas off of you know off of each other the whole weekend or the whole week and that was you know that was fun um you know at the end of the week we you know our cars were feeling pretty good and so we kind of went out and just messed around for you know a couple tanks you know kind of it was kind of getting dark and you know the track's obviously not in its prime you know condition so you know we threw on some like blue, I think detoxes and just went out there and, you know, just had fun and battled and, you know, didn't really care, like just kind of throwing it around and really just kind of that, um, like practice you do at the end of the day where it doesn't really matter. You're just kind of out there having fun. So that was, you know, that was good. Um, I think that was enjoyable. And, uh, I think I learned a lot, you know, Joe learned a lot and, um, yeah, it was, it was a fun week. So, who had the hot lap? I told Joe. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> what class? Come on, man. All right, all right. <laughs> so, the hot lap of the track was a 25-7. I did a 25-7, and it was Nitro Chuggy ended up being the fastest. And we ran, which I never would have thought, but that was my fastest car. And it was a 25-7. And I, I told him I wasn't going to say anything, but he, you know, he could only go 26 flat. Oh. I mean, I, but I don't, I, we're like, so I went out and I made a bunch of changes, you know, thickened up the disc and stuff. And we were, I was like, I blew the track off and I was like, all right, man, this one's going to be good. And I'm kind of running, and then, you know, stuff's feeling pretty good. And I'm just like, all right, you know, it's like 26 flat, 26 flat, 26 one, 26 two, 26 flat. And I'm like, I'm like, all right, if I just stay out here for another couple of laps, I got to hit a 25. So I, and I keep going. It's 25. Like, you, you kind of know when it's a good lap. Like, right. I did this one, like, it, it was, um, I just did a section, like, super close to the pipe and felt pretty good. You know, the dust wasn't there yet. So I'm like, oh super good drive out of the corner and i'm coming like i'm hit the last apex too i'm like all right, all right this is good full throttle come down the straightaway she goes 25 7 and i literally i i screamed woo and then i was like all right but i still gotta bag it up i come across the line i think it did like a 26 2 wow. like, all, right, all right not a bad lap back up my hot lap and i was kind of then i kind of stopped i parked the car and i went down to the stand and i go 25 7 you're gonna have to beat this. I was like, I I pulled my car in because I was like, all right, this is pretty good. I mean, I don't, I gotta like, I didn't stop running from there, but I just was like, all right, I'm gonna pull off, and I was like, all right, I'll pull a track off for you. Here you go, and dude, we went at it. It was that it was fun. Um, our nitro buggies were the same lap. We did 26 flats. Um, e buggy, I think he did 26 flat, and I think I did a one or a flat. So I mean, everything kind of felt pretty, you know. I would say our, we were hauling some serious tail. I mean, dude, it. I I kind of was at we were kind of running. I'm like, oh, you know, you think Mayfield would kind of be going faster than us? And Joe was like, dude, we're hauling ass. Like, <laughs> we're going good. Like, I was like, I don't want to discredit ourselves here, but I'm like, you, you know, I mean, there's always that possibility. You think you're like, oh, you know, this guy's so much better. You know, you're kind of like, he's got to be going faster if he was here. Right. But dude, we were hauling some tail, and um, it was fun. You know the track was awesome, like I said. So that yeah, was a good time. But no, I did win the hot lap challenge. I will take that one to the grave. I, um, I'll talk to Ryan and I'll see. I'll tell him that you guys think that you got him covered in Savannah. Oh, uh -oh. yeah. You know? I mean, we'll have to. 
fly the PJ. We'll have to take it out to Arizona, pick him up, and you know, bring him down to Savannah. Obviously, I'll give him the same set of tires I ran. Blow the track up. Give him the same set of conditions. And t- it took me a tank. So if it does, if, I don't care. He has to learn the layout and do it in a tank. I don't care. He's that good. The guy's just gotta. Is he doing gotta, it in one tank? I'll give him a tank and a half. He gets I'll do a tank this. I'll give him five laps to learn the track. <laughs> five laps. I'll come in like, hey mate, come in for some fuel, and then he's on the clock. <laughs> He, so sounds fair. I mean, it, and it honestly does. Yeah. Like, yeah, this guy, yeah. Tank and a half. You got it, Bubba. <laughs> All right. Well, um, Jackson, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I like the story and uh, looking forward to seeing what's happening this year. We got some great races to go to. Mm-hmm. And um, maybe you can have that Renner Nick moment. Uh, maybe we're going to. We're gonna have to like use that. That could be like the new uh, phrase, having that Rinderdick moment. Rinderdick uh, moment. Because uh, he had it. I don't know that I've seen that um, very often. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully you can have one of those one of those moments, one of those weekends. And but uh, yeah, give it a give a shout out here <clears throat> to your sponsors, and I know your uh, your parents and everybody and. Uh, we'll close her out yeah i'd like to thank of course you know jason and Gotti for having me on the podcast it's pretty been it's been awesome i enjoy that stuff um but yeah i'd like to thank hb racing j concepts mernon modified engines uh trinity vp racing futaba stick it one easy customs absolute hobbies uh xtr oils I hate, I hate, I feel it's so disrespectful when you All my sponsors. Uh, no, no, I, no, you got, you, um, I think the only one you've missed that I can think of is the Servo. Oh, MKS. Ah, oh, damn it. Yeah, MKS <laughs> Servos. I'm sorry if you're watching, Kenny. Yeah, MKS Servos. I'm sorry. But yeah, thank you guys for all your support. And of course, my mom and dad, my whole family, they're behind me 100%. Um, everything's been good there. Of course, you know, my buddies, um, they've all been huge, you know, supporters and everything. And, whatnot so i appreciate all you guys so when uh, one more question when you stopped by the shop here the other day you had your dirt bike in the back um are you better at rc or with your dirt bike for sure rc i mean i, I can <laughs> okay. make a main i mean yeah for sure <laughs> okay. uh, yeah al, you can talk to al al says i jump sideways i say i'm scrubbing who knows the guy <laughs> Who knows? But I mean, not. if anybody knows, you would think Al would know that guy. He's a badass, huh? I know, but so uh, just so. to give me an idea, when you guys are out there running, riding your dirt bikes, is Al better than all you guys? Oh, hundred percent. They got yeah, yeah, hundred percent. He's yeah, he's pretty fast. So like when he so he watches you guys for a while, and then he's like, "All right, time to go out and lay it down," <laughs> and he like will go out there, and then he'll like whoop up on you guys. So. Uh, all kind of so we you know the last track we went to on that trip where me and austin were having a good you know right race together you know it's like practice it's not like a race but you know you all start out close to each other so we all race and me and austin were kind of like rolling on our own having fun and i'm like i look behind like i go over this triple in the back and i kind of look behind me i'm like all right you know i got a pretty good gap to aiden and you know it's all for fun but you know you want to it's all it's a company you want to win yeah so like i'm like all right i get a pretty good gap to aiden and um i'm like kind of like just doing my own thing going through the motions you know and i'm like i hear this bike i'm like that doesn't sound like a gas gas like that's what aiden writes i'm like that doesn't sound like his bike and then i kind of like do this little double i look behind me i see al and i'm like oh god <laughs> and he like we go to this next corner he absolutely stuffs me like he kind of runs me wide and i'm just like i kind of pull the clutch in and go <laughs> like just kind of you know it's something you do but yeah he all al hauls ass he's pretty good good yeah I, I get a chance to talk to him about it occasionally and um it's pretty fun to talk to him about it um just I remember one time he told me he, he's like, you know, in the 80s, Jay, if you didn't have that hair coming out of the helmet, 
He goes, you were nobody. You weren't getting any girls. You weren't getting any interviews. If you didn't have that hair coming out of the helmet, I always thought that was funny. Yeah, yeah it, dude, that's the same stuff now, dude. Everyone's got, I mean, I had long hair. You guys all made fun of me for it, but yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's the style. Yep. It's funny how that comes back. Um, I'd say that was the big thing in the late 80s, early 90s was uh was that kind of style it's kind of funny that you guys i mean i cole ogden's got a monster mullet now huh? yeah and that um that riley kid that was doing the interviews on uh oh, at crc yeah. go back to that Gotti uh riley filbert i think that's his name he races for us he was doing the interviews there for live rc i don't he's know what, up. i don't know what he's done with his hair but that this seems like he's been working on this since um, he's been a baby. I mean, I don't know how you get your hair this long. Like, <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, he's really he really should be. Um, you guys all had baby mullets compared to this guy. I don't even know if it's a mullet. Just out of control. God, he's trying to get it brought up here. But I know when I talk to Mayfield about it, like we'll kind of hash about it when we talk about trucks and stuff. Like, Look at oh that. my gosh. How do you top that? <laughs> wow. That that's, is the real deal. That's dude. too. I, yeah, that's that's nuts. That's definitely some. Like right there, Andrew Daniel, that's some moto hair. Wait, like, okay, let's oh, see yeah, the thanks. moto hair. So, like, go back like 10, 15 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> The right there, hair. So, dude that is right here there. That's, oh. that's the moto hair okay that's like the perfect length and now look at yeah then look at his riley yeah. i mean he <laughs> i mean that is, is that, a girl? that that's the real deal dude you guys are not coming anywhere close no to that. heck no i mean dude look at my hair dude i'm already bald <laughs> <laughs> yeah i feel you but whatever but yeah, dude, me and Mayfield will always, he'll be like, have you heard yourself on that thing yet? Dude, that's always his question. <laughs> or he'll like, oh, have you got a 450 yet? And I'll be like, no, I'm not that stupid. <laughs> so, but no, it's fun. I, I enjoy everyone kind of picking fun at me about it. That's just, I kind of, I honestly kind of like, I love doing it. Like, don't get me wrong, I love doing it. But I also love the everyone talking to me about it because i'm so into it so like when they're like well, like just talking about it, i'm just into it like ryan could be absolutely roasting me about it and i'm just like full intent yeah. he's got my full like full you know focus and i'm laughing at it and just like oh yeah yeah I, i'm pretty envious of you being able to try these different things and go out there and not be afraid like to do it and be out there with the guys i think it's pretty cool that you have uh maybe this goes back to your uh no shame like yeah. paul says he's jackson's got no shame he's like if i'm gonna race dirt bikes i'm throwing it out there yeah. let's go yeah dude i i suck but it's it's fun so i just got some comments here about the hair yeah do we have any questions i completely forgot we were live we, we, we do have a couple <laughs> i'm sorry i forgot no, that's all right we no, were we I mean, were going we through have... Yeah. Jason was hitting them. Uh, Will Britton saying, now you need a scooter. Well, they are dirt scooters. There you go, Will. But, yeah, scooter. That'd be fun. Dude, I'd hurt myself on the road. <laughs> kidding me? Yeah, I know. I'd, like, kill I'd rather hit the dirt than hit the pavement. <laughs> That's true. Mm. But. True. I think um, Will, Will mentioned here that Riley's hair would get caught in a gear. Yeah. <laughs> Get caught in the truck. Oh, dude, I couldn't even imagine. Oh, that'd be gnarly. Ugh. Yeah, dude, they had, I mean, they had Supercross last night. That was the opening round. That was. Oh, boy. I mean, this could be a whole other two hours. But yeah, yeah, we don't need to get in on that. I topic. know, but that was fun. But yeah. So, so who won? Uh, Christian Craig won 250 and Roxon won 450. Yeah, so that's it then, right? No, no. Roxon. It would be Jason had this running joke that after Rox A1, nobody cares. Well, I, yeah, it's, it's like, all right, it's done. No, dude, that Roxon, he'll develop some disease like he always does. And like, and like halfway after Daytona, round nine, he'll be like, oh, you know, I got AIDS or I got glaucoma or something. 
fade the last five minutes. Dude, Cooper Webb's going to win. I don't care what anybody says. Okay, so, that's pretty strong. He's He'll win. I'll put five bucks on it. Okay. Mm. I'm Seems not like a I'm betting man, fine. but... If you I'll, were. Yeah, if I was, Cooper Webb. So... Hmm. All right. Well, Jackson, you'll need to add me on the. Uh, yeah. you, you'll have to shoot me on Messenger your uh, PC. Uh, <laughs> if you, if you want a bullet sponge in your matches. With yeah, you. dude, I haven't been playing that much COD. Like, oh really? What are you? What aside are you doing, from man? well, aside from like you, you know, you built a PC being, for what? Well, I mean, I got F one and. Oh uh, okay. It, I, there's a dirt bike game we all play that's pretty fun. Oh, gotcha. But no, nah, dude, the new I we could go on for hours. But dude, the new Warzone's so trash. Oh, the Vanguard. I yeah, the I map. don't like the new map. It's, okay. I like it. I I'm not that good, but it's like it doesn't. It doesn't yeah, the new well. maps. It's it basically work. like Her dance a was look way section. Better. It just doesn't go. <laughs> How's it compared to like say Super Mario, like the original? I never played them. Come on, Jason. Okay, well, uh, I did have a Razer flip phone if that helps. Oh, okay. You did. You had one. Mm-hmm. Have you wow, seen that? We meme, were talking about meme? that in the chat not too long ago, Jason. The uh, meme where there's like the World Wide Web button on the old Razer. Uh. <laughs> there's a meme about that. It's pretty damn funny. Dude, yeah, like I, if, I, back I, then, I, if you yeah, hit that button, it cost you a lot of money. There you go. I think that was the. It was something along that line, like. Yeah. Yeah. Like if, yeah, like if what was the old school thing? Like if you called after a certain time, it cost money, or it cost more money or something. Or it cost less money, like after seven p.m. Usually, yeah. Yeah. That's way back. Jeez. Nighttime minutes or something. It was called. Man. Wow. I'm shocked you had a razor. That's that's pretty cool. Always Dude, I had that. that phone, and was... I had that. I had this old phone where it's like you. Probably screwed. the next hell. You flipped a phone over and it the screen went from like this and went this way, and it was like a little game. Th- Dude, it was rad. I don't hmm. know what it was called, but it. There were wow. definitely some intricate. Now we just have this, you know, this big brick. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's oh, so, so just for our our uh, internal knowledge and, and our poll, what do you have as your background screen on your phone? My log screen. It's a dirt bike photo. That's my guess. Yeah, I'll show you. Let me clear his notifications. Hang on. <laughs> I do look pretty. Here. Dude, there's more coming up. Why? <laughs> I cleared all these notifications and they keep. It'll... Uh, yeah, well, see, is second. that you? Hold on. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Dude, you look like uh, a pro. Okay. It went off, but uh, there it is. Yep. Dude, you look, look like you. a pro. I took that I photo. Know. Some dude. Hmm. And that's on my... your uh, cover profile, on your uh, Facebook cover too, right? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm dude, I'm a prof- anyone that I'm a professional, bro. You, you are. out there in Anaheim? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Jackson, how do you deal with nerves? Any special way you deal with it? Do you get nervous? Oh uh, yeah, you get nervous. Uh, honestly, Brent Telke was probably one of the best guys that could calm you down in uh, Nitro. I mean, AJ was pretty good at that too. Uh. I just kind of count to three, do three deep breaths, and just, I would say I do it every time. I, I, I don't like, I don't know. The last kind of year, I just kind of went into the mentality of like, oh, well, whatever happens, happens. <laughs> Effort. Yeah. Like, I, that was kind of the, like, I'd say before this last year, I was kind of like, all right, all right, all right, like doing the whole thing. Yeah, but yeah. Now, this last year, I was just kind of like, all right, well. Whatever happens, happens. So I, was, I I think this last year I was pretty good at not being so worked up. Because that, that'll – you can get worked up and ruin yourself. So I would say – like if someone takes you out or something, yeah. like it's easy to focus on the negative. So it's way harder to be positive about it all. And, uh, yeah, I'd say just kind of going into it with a level head and knowing you have 45 minutes to figure it out. I mean the qualifying is another thing. I mean, the qualifying is definitely a little more hectic, but it's still yeah. kind of the same thing. You're like, oh, all right, whatever. And qualifying, if someone takes you out, you just hope you can get back to them and take them back out. To kind of... <laughs> I like it. Speaking the truth. I love yeah. it. That's just kind of how it goes. Yeah. All right, bro. Well, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it, man. You have to yeah, be, thanks uh, for having me. 
and back was, on sooner and, uh, than later. We already did the sponsorship shout outs too, so we're good. Yeah. Yeah. And uh I'm gonna run it through again. I all right, go ahead. You got a list there? Yeah. No, no, no. I have no list. I swear. I'll look at the camera the whole time. Oh. Okay. Thank you to HB Racing, J Concepts, Mernon Modified Engines, Trinity, Futaba, MKS, uh, Absolute Hobbies, RevTech, Stick It One, Easy Custom, VP Racing. That's it. There like, is. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Awesome. See, I, I'm going to be honest. I hate when people forget it. Because that is the one of the most annoying things ever. Yeah. When people go, I hate doing it. Yeah. I mean, normally you'll see me like right before the interview. All right. <laughs> Look down. Yeah. You kind of get when a people forget people. to say Radio Impound Podcast. But anyway. It Radio Impound Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I hate when that's kind of a pet peeve of mine. But New Year, you got to learn a little bit of new stuff. Yeah, that's true. You got to remember all the new uh, sponsors. Oh. But yeah, thanks again for having me. Yeah. I've enjoyed it. it it's was been awesome. awesome. I love doing these podcasts. So yeah, I appreciate it. All right. Well, good mm-hmm. luck, and we'll see you soon. All right. Sounds good. See you, man. See ya. All right, Jackson Brunson, everyone. What you got there, Jason? Oh, I'll show that tire. off. Yeah, some new tires and wheels we're gonna release. Nothing special. Okay. Just kidding. It's all, all special. All right, well, let's uh, look at the uh, schedule quick that I had up behind me. Okay. There you go. Yeah, so the uh, Hannah was just up there at CRCRC, uh, Ohio RC Factory. Uh, they just finished that up today. Uh, Paul was at the Emerge Series number one that was out in Bartow, Florida. Hmm. Uh, Allison and I are going to be heading to the Chili Bowl this week. Uh-oh, we're going to get the Chili Bowl flu. Oh, man. I... I'm That's pretty sure yeah. that I kept delaying to go to last year because I was just because the year before that is when I got the chili bowl flu, right? And I was just so scared, like because it was, and I'm just I'm like dreading it already. Yeah. Um, but anyway, and then uh, that same weekend we got the SIC, which Paul's gonna be going to, and that'll be like the big one eight scale season opener. You know, Mayfield, Spencer, um, a lot of the, the guys will be running that. So going to be a big <clears> race. <throat> and then it'll be our Sorry. opener for our INS series, the Winter Indoor Nationals at SDRC in California, February 4th through 6th. Uh, so looking forward to that. I think I'm going to race in that one. That might be Ooh. my first race of uh, 2022. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I really need to get a little bit of running in ahead of time, man. I was watching the 40 plus guys race today mm-hmm. and uh, I used to get jealous watching the two wheel mod mains. Like I wish I was in it. Um, but now it's almost like I'm in the 40, I watched the 40 plus mains and I'm thinking, Oh, I could be in this race. <laughs> <laughs> Al Horn kicking some butt, Brian Dunbar, Jim Bronson. I'm like, these are my guys. These are who yeah, I Dunbar race out in uh, CRC mm-hmm. doing well out there this weekend. So after that, we got the Emerge Series number two at SS, uh, which is Setzer's Hobbies and Raceway. That's February 11th to 12th. And then look what's next. Motorama. Harrisburg, PA. February 18th through the 20th. Are you going? Yep. I'm not going. Mm. I think Fred will be doing that event with the van. Uh, they got yep. big dirt oval um, competition <laughs> there this year, as well as the normal uh, I guess they got an, they, are they running e e buggy there still? I think. Yeah, I think so. Uh, then Rich will be at the US TE scale off road event in Williston, Florida. That's a big scale event, um, huge. I actually love to go to that. Um, if I, and if I'm open, I may actually go out there for that. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. What is that? February. Let's take a look. <clears throat> I suppose I could go to that. And then the very next weekend, the big Dirt Nitro Challenge. February 23rd through the 27th. That's going to be insanely packed. That's going to be a big race. Well, there's a lot of big races, but that's that's 
the big race of big races. All right. That was episode 236. Big thanks for Jackson Brunson. I didn't realize we didn't have him on the show. That was the first time. Yeah, it's I cool. think he made some cameo appearances when we had Spencer on. Correct, in the yeah. background. But uh, ah, cool. It was great to have him on the show. Um, and you keep bringing those tires over. Look at you. I love these things. Look at these. Got some wheels here. Look at that. Jason showing those off. These little guys. Look at these things. What's, what you got there? Those are for some SEX 24 tires and wheels. This is for the 24th scale crawlers. These things are awesome. Wow. These things are oh, so cool. Tiny things. And then um, the body that Alex Sturgeon's waiting on, the uh, <laughs> cab only creep body. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, this is just stuff I was writing about. So when I'm writing about it, I like to have the, Oh, the doing I, press releases. Yeah, so when I'm writing about it, I like to kind of have it so I can refer to it for some information and details. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's part of it. You gotta gotta have the the words to go along with the product. And um, I've I've done a bunch of these things now, and some are better than others. But mm -hmm. I try to try to do as good a job as possible some are better than others and some are way more difficult than others too <laughs> well i look forward to the press release do you send the emails out yet nope not yet oh, okay all right guys we will catch you for 237 maybe next week uh It'll have to jason, be after chili uh, bowl after chili bowl and jason will be sick with the chili bowl flu so what the way oh, i hope not <laughs> all right guys we'll catch you later see ya thanks for joining us